Welcome to the very first episode of the Zephyr's XP podcast. It is my great, great honor to have my wonderful friend, Ryman3, aka Will, on the channel, on the podcast. Thank you seriously so much for being here, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me, my man. I'm super excited to... We chatted a little bit before we press record and well before my audio i actually had oh my, my audio God. going <laughs> so we were talking for like 20 30 minutes before um i guess i didn't have my go xlr properly added so now we should have audio now we should be good um yeah. generally i'm referred to as the audio guy in a lot of streams tip number one <laughs> tip number make one make sure it works make sure it's plugged in <laughs> right i you know i was watching obs this whole time well not the whole time but like i kind of had it in the side over here and the whole audio mixer was completely blank the whole time so i'm like maybe I, it must be hidden right and then just randomly i'm like you know I'm, I'm just gonna check unhide all oh there's nothing hitting oh i should probably add that oops luckily the the go yeah. xlr is super good with like like putting everything through it and then just kind of being good so it should be just kind of good one right of those away. dude i would love one of those there you know i got the the big one um with like the sampler and the the effects and everything and i've had it for like five months and i still haven't really even tried the sampler or anything the only thing i Is have the sampler where like you record a piece of your voice and you can replay it yeah yeah so i've seen people do like burps <laughs> They'll like burp <laughs> and then they'll sample it and Haley just like, burp. yep. And then they'll add like a beat and something to it and then make like a beatbox out of their burp. It's, it's funny, but that is amazing. I kind of want one. Uh, I, I need that in my life. I would say, I mean, the, it's probably my favorite. It's honestly probably my favorite piece of thing that I have out of every single thing. Like it's, it's right in front of me. So I'm always looking at it and it's all pretty and shiny, but not uh, your SMB, uh, not SM, um, your uh, sm7b um honestly so i was so torn between getting the sm7b or getting the what is it's like this gray one um that kind of has ridges in it it's like an electro road i think oh okay the what is it like not the 2020 i can't remember what it's called but it's a really nice one Let's but see it, if i can find this now i'm it, curious it's like from everything i was listening to like deep listening with headphones on it has like a crisper sound whereas the sm7b is like a darker kind of warmer sound i guess uh a, a bit more bassy generally yeah. yeah see the thing is though i feel like if you get if you're getting a good mic and you have just good like mixing and good like you know compression and anything you can make like a hundred dollar microphone sound incredible like to the point where unless you're probably an audiophile, you probably couldn't tell the difference too much, you know? No, 100%. You're right. Uh, I'm trying to find this friggin' thing you're talking about, this microphone. I'm going to be you've, you've kind of honest. I kind of mostly a good 50% of me buying the SM7B was probably the looks of it. That super minimal clean design. You know what? That's one of the reasons I wanted the Audio Technica AT twenty twenty. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. Zach has that one. You might have that one. Yeah, it's. I don't want to touch anything because it's right. gonna make a loud, obnoxious noise. <laughs> but there's like a nice shock, you know, holding it. There's a small filter over top of it. Yeah. So it has that um, stereotypical kind of studio look. Mm-hmm. Or at least one of the stereotypical studio looks. The great thing about the Shure SM7B, though, it is completely dynamic. You do not need phantom power. Right. That is my favorite thing about it. Right, right. And I mean, the Go XLR, like, I've heard some people say they add, like, a cloud lifter to it to kind of take a little bit of the, the gain hiss away. But even when I've, like, cranked it all the way up, it's just so faint. Like, I can, at 100% volume, I can barely hear it, but anything below that it's it's so incredibly subtle so i've loved it so yeah. far no they i find like they they really went all out with that stuff and the hissing is like even on your streams there's i barely hear any if there is any yeah usually I'm, there's there's none i try i i always tell everyone like if there's anything y'all notice that's wrong like please please tell me because like even when i'm at yeah. work I, I always tell my managers like 
rip me apart <laughs> if you see something <laughs> I could do better. Cause like I'm the type of person that like just super craves and feeds off of feedback. So a lot of it's, mm -hmm. it's tough. Cause sometimes people, I don't know. They just, I don't want to say they always say the nice things, but sometimes I'm like looking for someone to be like, I don't know for like brutally more, honest. Yeah. Like more feedback yeah. or like more critical feedback or like, you know, I really think you should be doing this and like kind of give me some thoughts, but I'm always open. So I'm always open. That's to what I like telling people and when I stream. Yeah. So I was like, Hey, if anything's off, if anything's out of sync, anything doesn't seem right. Let me know in chat. I'll like, I'll open up the stream and I'll take a look at myself as well to like double check everything. Just make sure it's all proper right right like like if if no one's willing to say anything then we're not going to improve exactly and i think it's different too if it's like like a, one of your friends telling you versus just mm -hmm. someone popping in and being like pretty much backseating you know backseat gaming or backseat streaming essentially backseat streaming yeah backseat, streaming, backseat right. master control <laughs> right like you know if it was me and this was my stream i would do this and it's like well it's not your stream so <laughs> yeah well it's not your stream that's it that's it period End it's of my sentence. stream it's not it's not your show is it right 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 and honestly one of my favorite things about streaming and watching other people stream just watching everybody stream is everybody's setup is so unique and personal to them whether it's like ultra minimal with nothing or it's like has a lot of things going on or it has like cool animations or it has like like everything everyone is so unique and so different like immediately when you hop in someone's stream you can kind of be like oh i kind of i kind of see what we're about a little bit like the first impression you know yeah so um when you said setup i didn't it didn't occur to me immediately that you met you were talking like everything like on the screen itself like on the, yeah. the overlay and how it was all laid out so the first thing i thought is this this screen screen being held up yeah it is a very thin sheet of fabric being held up with pvc piping yeah nice Just, and like wooden posts <laughs> we just built green it from screens nothing. are so underrated like I've probably seen the most creative streams on Twitch using green screens. I've seen some pretty unique stuff done with green screens. I mean, my thing is it's a CRT joke, so not a lot of people get it immediately, which saddens me greatly. But young you know, people these maybe days. Oh, day. <laughs> you kids, you'll never, you'll know, know what we've had to deal with. We... <laughs> Had to walk downhill both ways to go to school in the uh, blizzarding or thunderstorm. Yes. Oh, I've only heard that 10 million times in my life. <laughs> That's my favorite. Like walking uphill both ways. Yes. In the snow, barefoot. Exactly. Man, I mean, I get, I get, I kind of understand though. Cause like, what if there's like a, like a bit of a dip that have mm -hmm. to go downhill and then uphill. Right. So like right then it's a, an, it's an omittance of truth but it is uphill both ways <laughs> you're 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 not wrong 100 percent, 100 percent. you know i feel like i don't know i just i just there was a big part of me that really wanted to use a green screen when i was starting to stream and i just thought i had like i'm like i have a nice camera maybe i should try to figure out something to use it for but like i would love to at least jump i would i would like to have a green screen screen scene i don't know one day <laughs> I didn't even have a nice camera when I started streaming. You don't it was need a nice camera. It was literally a dollar store webcam. Yeah? Yeah, I'll... for about like half a month, they were selling like small like computer accessories. So like a, like a mouse that could fit in the palm of your hand. A super what? tiny, like pocket size. It was like a folding keyboard. They had, um, and they all would break instantly yeah. if you tried to use them for other purposes or like anything at all. But like the, the webcam... I perched it up very particular in a super particular way on like um like a little a little plastic ostrich. Ah, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> His name is er Eric the Ostrich. Yeah. And he would he would be leaning up against uh Steve Irwin, the the tortoise. Oh. And they would they would help me do my stream by holding up my webcam. That's kind and of it was awesome. like it was terrible quality. It was like not even 
not even like the 360 is it 360p i don't know oh, i don't know what the hell are yeah, yeah. It, it was barely even that i'm pretty sure it was like 20 fps at most yeah oh no but it worked though isn't it funny how once you start using 60 frames per second immediately when you go to 30 oh God, frames yeah. per second all you see is just choppy frames you just see like the motion blur yeah yeah i did that on demon souls a couple months back when i was playing like because i was playing it on 60 frames and i dropped it down to 30 frames with like the rtx ray tracing and everything just to see and i only lasted like one minute i'm like all i see you is hated it yeah i'm like all i see Couldn't is frames it. it's like killing me but i never noticed it before what is this slideshow i'm being shown <laughs> what it, hello right Can I get some more pixels and frames please thanks yes yes, yes exactly so I do have I do have a couple questions kind of to go over and just to just to kind of ask and kind of get to know you a little bit better if, if you're yeah, okay with that. Do, brother. Hell yeah. So in just a couple like sentences, a paragraph, who is Ryman 3? If you were talking, kind of introducing yourself to people, who is Ryman 3? Who is Will or who is Ryman 3? Who is both? Now that's 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 a whole other uh, topic. Who's both? Um, so generally, like, I give the spiel a lot whenever I get raided. Like, I'll open up with, hello, everybody, what's going on? Um, my name is Will, or Ryman3, as my Twitch channel would suggest. I'm what the kids call a variety streamer, which means to do a bunch of stuff, do whatever I want, and have fun with it. So that's really all, like, Ryman3 is. Ryman3 is, uh, he, he's kind of more of a, um... What's the word? More eccentric version of myself, more open and talkative and just out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Isn't it so interesting how I wonder, I wonder, imagine everybody kind of has just like an internet personality and just like a real, you know, live version of themselves. Like well, if we look back to like 2012, even everyone was way, way different on the internet yeah no one was scared of anything yeah. they would say whatever they wanted to on the internet because they didn't care and then as like say even just from 2012 to now like everything's progressed and now people are getting scared to you know be as rude for lack of a more pg word yeah uh, to be to be more rude on the internet because they they know the dangers they know that it's not as safe as they thought it was that's so true i feel like a lot of people if they want to say rude things now or say just really, you know, just really negative things. I feel like a lot of them create these alt, alt accounts, like these alternative accounts. Yeah. You know, they'll have like their main whoever they are. And then if they want to be a butthead or say just derogatory or mean things, there's like this fake account they do, you know, you, and you can and tell this. <laughs> You can tell there on was Twitter. There's one guy I was. Um, oh yeah, on Twitter you can always tell. <laughs> yeah, it's tw it's Twitter. There, right. There's no there, there's no hiding on. on Twitter. <laughs> it's Twitter. Everyone hates everything. Yeah. Um, there was one guy who popped into my stream. I don't remember what his name was, and I think his account got like taken down from Twitch anyway. Um, he jumped into my stream, said, "Follow my Instagram," and proceeded to call us two different racial slurs. <laughs> One of them, you just cannot say. The other, I was unaware was even a racial slur because I thought it, I thought, like, I didn't. It, like, it's, it's two words that you would normally use to, I don't want to say it. Right, right. For obvious reasons, but like, you wouldn't think it's a racial slur. You would hear it and you're like, that's, excuse me? Right. <laughs> what? It's more confusion. It's like someone just called you a toaster oven and you're like, what? I had that um, um like on my crazy guy on my like dad jokes or yeah I think it was one of my dad jokes or something um one of them I saw was something like that where I like read it and I had no idea what the word was so I looked it up and immediately I'm like what why I I why is this on here I cannot yeah oh no oh yeah freaking internet I mean Matt you got like a wild thing going with the dad jokes and the <laughs> The, the spark the spark the convo yeah i had those I, are those are good 
I have like no I draw such blanks on on what to do for the channel points like I just look at them and I'm like I have no idea what to do I have no idea what to add I just feel like I have a secret I have yeah. a secret to tell you check no other knows. people <laughs> no one has any idea what what to do with them yeah they're just kind of I don't there. know what to do with them they're there to yeah. like hydrate you and I was like what can I add that's like fo okay, what what is everyone else doing? Well, there's hydrate, mm -hmm. stretch. There's all these. Okay, let's add these in. Guide the raid. Sure, why not? That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, well, what what do what now? Oh, what can I do my to add to my personality? Just died. These no. <laughs> Remember how I said go oh like going wireless? Oh my goodness, this is the moment. This is the moment. Remember how I said okay that I can hear again. Do you remember how I told you how? <laughs> I will, I will always try my best to not go wireless. Yeah. Do you remember how I told you that? Yeah. Just w wouldn't that be, uh, who's, who's envious now? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, the cool thing with these ones though. Oh, the cool thing with these ones, you just swap the battery out super duper fast. So yeah, that, that was really cool. Just by that was wild. Pop it out. And so yeah, sorry. Could you repeat that last part since my damn headphones oh, yeah. died? <laughs> um i was just saying like well what can i do with the channel points that would you know like kind of represent the brand and represent both me and what's happening on on the screen what's so we we got psyduck the psyduck redemption points yes yes and then i added um i got into the world of leoran board because of king and, and ziada i was like okay well this seems like it could be pretty cool Let's check this out. And the thing that really like sparked it for me was seeing King's custom shout outs. Yeah. I was like, okay, well he can do a whole custom shout out. I got to be able to do something with this. So I got like a bunch of different visual effects for a bunch of different ones. Leoran board looks so cool. I, I downloaded it. I didn't really spend much time looking into it. I think I kind of opened it up and I was like, oh, this looks a little confusing. I'll stick with the stream oh, deck for now. <laughs> but I it is the least user friendly thing you're ever going to touch. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But if once you understand it, mm -hmm. it is so good. It is beautiful. I feel like after figuring out the go xlr because the go xlr software is like extremely confusing right out the gate but then after like 10 minutes it's kind of like one of those things you know when you get like photoshop you're have like i have no idea what any of this is and you just spend like 10 mm. minutes going through each yeah. one reading everything and then by like the end of it you're like okay i kind of have a feeling where to go yeah Sim that, well that similar. was kind of me with um well like with my mixer board too yeah like the first time i got a mixer board i was like okay this is fun. There's a lot of knobs. What so, do they all do? So many knobs. And for the most part, like if you just look at uh, like a, the first channel on this thing you, and you just copy that over like uh, X amount of times, that's all it is. Yeah. I see like a tail wagging in your background. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> that's Ellie. Ellie, you want to come say hi? Wifey. Like, look she, how good she is. She is good. She's just hiding back there. Hi, Ellie. Wifey like moved a ton of her stuff out of here like literally 30 minutes ago and I'm like are you really doing all of this like building a ton of furniture out there hammering things in dr drilling things in while I'm about to do a podcast which is kind of audio focused yeah just a yeah, little while, bit when else would she do it <laughs> right when I you're streaming no she's tired <laughs> I, I mean, I can't give her too much crap on that because it is extremely early in the morning. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Just like who, who wants who gets up at 6 a.m. to get ready to start you. streaming? You do. I, I wouldn't have I w literally wouldn't have any other time to do it. But that might I mean, change on on the other end of that, though, I'm three hours ahead of you. Mm. So by the time you start streaming, I'm doing my online class. There you go. Except this week. This week is is totally open for some reason. Um, I guess reading week is a thing, isn't it? Reading week. What is reading yeah, it's week? Like, it's like a March break. You know how you get like a week off. It's like yeah, spring, spring break. break. Gotcha, spring gotcha. break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's all it is. So this this whole weekend was nothing. So I would normally be in a class, but. So what are you going to uh, school for? Like audio or audio production stuff? 
So currently, I'm actually at the college for digital film production. Ooh. And I'm a little bit upset. I'm not going to lie. We're not doing audio. That is that is not a thing. Like we have very basics, like super one hundred and one information, but is it more like, like not doing post audio? Is it's, it, it is more of like camera writing, directing, cinematography um, stuff. A lot of that stuff. A lot of visual effects in post production. It's pretty much anything but, that's not audio. <laughs> the visual stuff. Yeah. No, we're we're actually doing everything but audio post stuff, and that's because there's not a lot of people interested in it. So. I get it. Yeah. I totally get it. I mean, I feel I like... I almost actually went to Canador College, which was... Um, oh, my God. I think it's in North Bay. Oh. That sounds right. North Bay. Um, I've been there a few times when I was doing uh, Skills Ontario, mm -hmm. which is like a little competition for different trade skills. And, like, their, their program there is incredible for, for TV development, film, audio production audio engineering rather um i almost did that but you know i didn't think i'd be able to just mentally deal with being in a completely different town yeah. different, like no, knowing nobody new school there's like three four different environments at once there yeah it's it's kind just of kinda, a lot yeah and then you know covid ah. so i i'm COVID. hey glad i'm here yeah yeah when i when I graduated high school, like two days after I graduated, I moved a thousand miles away to be with girlfriend, now wife here in Washington state. Like only been Washington state like one time previously and didn't know anybody, didn't have a job, didn't go to school, didn't have, it was just so out of the blue and thinking back on it, I'm like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, that I mean, was like, holy crap. <laughs> right no whatever that was that was a wild that was a wild play there yeah i mean it paid off i i guess just sometimes i have the mentality that you know with anything with streaming with podcasting was kind of starting all of this was just kind of going anywhere is just just do it do it just do it just do Jump it into it i mean even yeah. if you do it like really crappy as long as the next one is better than this and then the next one's better than that like you're you're heading in the right direction you know i feel like build off of past experience it's the best way to do it yeah i feel like so many people are scared to do just anything in life and or just like so many things in life and, and take that first step whether it's it, i mean just name anything you know well i mean like you you and i we're we're a fair chunk of years apart i say a fair chunk it's not actually that much but when i graduated high school and when you graduated high school it was basically like otherworldly economies yeah. as well yeah like i even like pandemic aside even if it weren't here like i i don't think financially i could do that yeah yeah I'd like, like just, it's inflation there's so much there it's just that's just one part of it, it inflation it, is just one part how how does how does college and everything like work in in canada is it just go into the office say hey i'm coming to school thumbs up and that's uh, kind of it i wish i wish our freaking post-secondary education was as good as our health care yeah that's what you do with health care you walk into a doctor's office or the hospital and you're like hey i'm dying and they're like all right don't here's how and they fix it <laughs> oh <laughs> they, my they fix God. it that's it they're like hey stop dying here you go this is how we stop and then they like bandage you up and they take the knife out of your chest <laughs> i just oh, they fix everything we could spend the next like four hours just talking about healthcare yeah. and, and all the oh, inefficiencies of of our of yeah. america's and oh my goodness i think most i think that's the thing i think most people in america like most a lot of people understand good, just how bad amount. yeah just understand how bad i think like honestly everyone understands just how terrible our healthcare system is and there's some people who kind of want to try this route of doing it and others that are like all these other countries are doing it this way they're successful with it you know what it is though mm -hmm. it it involves like if you get if you try to implement free healthcare into america now you have to have or uh, the usa because technically canada is part of north america they're, yeah they're, if you want to get geolog ge that's true geographically yeah. <laughs> correct <sighs> i can't speak <laughs> um 
if if it were try to you know if there if there were an attempt to implement it, there would have mm-hmm. to be more taxes. Yeah, and that's what people are so like eh, about. They don't want to do it. No taxes. No thanks. I'm good. Yeah, I mean the, the crazy part is like you could totally fund the healthcare system if you just had all the loopholes and all the taxes and tax cuts that extremely wealthy people take advantage of that 98 percent of people are not able to take advantage of like they hedge get... fund oh yeah oh yeah I, I mean hedge funds and and you know ceos and executives the, the fact that like st- the stock like selling money in the stock market or options you can get oh, a my God, lesser yeah. tax rate than it, like it's crazy that a hedge fund manager who makes a million dollars a year and a doctor who makes a million dollars a year pay different amounts in taxes that's wild just because of how they make their money i think it's the rate at how they make their money um yeah because by year is one thing but if you look at like by like by the week or by the two weeks or the month like those are v- it, it's very it, it it's very different it's extremely yeah. different i think that's where a lot of the calculation comes in i'm trying to find this one thing because i think it's hilarious gamestop redditors so already you know this is going to be incredible to the moon are you excuse me website are using their stock winnings to adopt gorillas gorillas i don't know how true this is (laughs) This was an article sent to me by my mother. Oh boy. On PCGamer.com. I have a, I have a feeling there was like two of them. You know, out of the million people Probably. who bought GameStop stock, there's like two of them who are like, we made money, let's go buy gorillas. And now I want a gorilla that's the friend. All right, let's go. I mean, they could be good <laughs> friends, I imagine. They you could also know? probably squash you and bend you in half with their pinkies. <laughs> possible I, I, I was i think it was on joe rogan podcast i was listening to but he was talking that there are more tigers in the state of texas than anywhere else in the entire world that's terrifying isn't that terrifying <laughs> that is horrifying that's that's why are we letting people do this they're tigers i have i have you no don't... idea <sighs> Anyway, to answer your question, <laughs> you don't just walk into the college and say, here I am. You you apply through, like, uh, for, it varies from province to province, mm-hmm. which is, like, the equivalent of the state. Yeah. Um, So I go to, like, on, OntarioColleges.ca, and I'm like, I want to go here. I would like to apply, please. All right, this is the money you need to pay to apply. So you pay that money, you apply, and then you get an email back that's like, you're in, or get out of here. <laughs> one as, of those two aside from the money that you pay to apply there's nothing else you pay i mean aside from like room and board maybe or off campus uh, well rent. i mean there's tuition so you have to do student loans unless you have something planned outside of that interesting there's, there's tuition and auxiliary fees like a bunch of stuff at the college i swear i always heard that canada had like free free education or free secondary education secondary sure post-secondary no oh like masters or doctorate oh interesting so at what it's so interesting that high school so at high school is that age like 18 19 20 21 high school is is high school zeph it's grade 9 10 11 and 12 okay okay i mean I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to, like to be fair, you're like, is this guy like really schools, asking if 22 year olds are high school? <laughs> are horribly, horribly different from like Europe to North America. Mm. I don't blame you for assuming it's wildly different from Canada to America. It's the American. Honestly, I thought out. it was even more different because apparently you guys have college, but we call your college university. Yeah, yeah. I think that's also similar, like in other places around the world like university university just sounds cool it's just like university sounds academic yeah it's just like you're you just imagine you're going into like a greek pantheon to study the scrolls and become wise doctors the scrolls <laughs> oh to become Damn, a wise getting, one getting wild but do i need to grab my sword <laughs> right right going back to ancient times 
So off. So question for you. I, I have been wanting to ask a little bit more about what, what was it that kind of got you interested in streaming or was streaming kind of like a byproduct of doing podcasting, doing some YouTube and it kind of led into streaming. So back in 2014, so that's a, that's a long time ago. Um, Oh God, that was seven years ago. I know that was know. seven years ago. I know. Oh my God. So back in 2014, seven years um, ago, See, back in seven years ago, my friend uh, comes to me and says, I'm doing a YouTube channel. Do you want to do it with me? Is that Templar? Yes, it's Templar. So Temp comes to me and she says, do you want to do this and help? I was like, sure. All right, you can upload to it if you want to. Cool. So I just started doing that. I just started making the crappy little recordings and edited in friggin movie maker windows movie maker yeah but you got started though right yeah i just had fun with it i just did whatever did whatever i wanted eventually i found uh, i think it was x split at the time okay yeah which was like it's it's kind of like obs but different branding i guess yeah um and then i was like oh there's live streaming capabilities that sounds wild so i looked into live streaming a little bit and then september 3rd in 2016, I decided I would, you know, actually take streaming seriously on on YouTube and I was actually going to do it. And at this point, like I, I wanted a good microphone. Yeah. So I had the Razer Siren. One of, one of their I think it was their first mi like proper standalone microphone product. Mm -hmm. And like it was just a USB one. It worked very, very nicely. Um, the blue Yeti, it's basically think of think of that, but razor branded with a couple different uh, factory settings. So I started doing that and it just kind of it, it felt more fun than recording a video and editing it. And uh, there was chat interaction. I was yeah. I was doing what I wanted to do live and people could see me mess up horribly and laugh at me instantly. And I cry a little bit inside and and then I, I get back up and. I realized my my body's still on the ground and I'm actually dead. Uh, <laughs> and then you revive and then you get back into the game and people witness the whole thing and they're talking about it like in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole thing was. It, it was just a lot more fun than than videos. So I kind of did a mixture of the two of them on on YouTube. And then eventually I was like, well, YouTube's kind of toxic, though, and they're dealing with a lot of really, really crappy algorithmic stuff. Was this during Ad Adpocalypse time on YouTube? Uh, wasn't during Adpocalypse. I, I couldn't even make money off of it if I wanted to. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I think they, they changed their settings to or not the settings, the qualifications. So that you need thousand. like 10,000 lifetime views, mm -hmm. just views in general throughout your whole channel and 1000 subscribers and then you can get a google like ad scene account and you can do stuff with that and you can get some ad revenue and not to get super super behind the scenes but like you can do a week's worth of streaming to 40 people average on each stream mm -hmm. and you can make 10 cents in ad revenue yeah um, ad revenue is not reliable <laughs> It's, it's for the creators. It's not. No, I I, I mean, for, what the, is, for the big companies, it's it's great. Oh, especially Twitch like Twitch's Twitch feeds. So I have Twitch. I have Twitch Turbo and I, I do everything in my power for any kind of media I consume to buy like the premium version because I like despise ads. So I don't really ever see any ads on Twitch, but wifey, she does. And literally, like if we're ever like on TV on her account, just like watching someone. I'm just, I'm always like, holy crap. Like they literally are feeding ads all the yeah. time. And the pre-roll ads, did yeah. you know that about 30% of people who click on channels and get a pre-roll ad right away, just click off the channel before they even see the streamer. The bounce yeah, rate. Actually, that makes sense. That's crazy. That's that's someone clicking your image and then a pre-roll ad happens. So that one's actually an Amazon thing. Yeah, through Amazon. That was an Amazon decision 
uh, to Twitch because they need to make more money to keep the lights on. Yeah. Um, you if you play like mid rolls during your stream, you don't get the pre rolls. Yeah, the pre rolls are they won't happen, but it has to be like a certain amount of time between the ads. It's yeah, it's so weird. It is, and it's it's. I mean, what's the? I've heard, I've heard some people talk about like just different solutions for bringing in revenue or or making money on Twitch. Like, I'm I'm not a I'm not really a crazy big fan of relying on friends or fans or viewers or whatever to like donate money. I feel like I I don't know. I feel like I would, but I feel like sponsorship is could be seen as selling out. You know, not or selling out. It depends on the company. But then there's like also AdSense, which is super unreliable. So yeah. So with sponsorships, it's a matter of like, do you like the brand that you're, you know, sponsor that you're sponsored by? Do you right. actually use and enjoy their product? Do you right. care if you enjoy the product that you are being sponsored by mm -hmm. and you could you would endorse them even outside of the sponsorship, like 100 percent that right. is not selling out. I agree. That's the way I see it. I agree. Like with uh, Game Grumps, like Aaron with um, with Wendy's. He loves Wendy's. Yeah. <laughs> so much. <laughs> what's the What's your go to at Wendy's? Baconator. Dave's double. Oh, Dave's Always double. Dave's double. Ooh, Dave's double is really Sometimes good. Sometimes the triple if I'm feeling a little bit frisky. <laughs> we actually had Wendy's <laughs> last night randomly. Oh my god. I think we got the four Dude. for four. Just something like light and simple. I might be getting Wendy's tomorrow. Ooh. Treat or yourself. Arby's. I don't know yet. Oh man, I haven't had Arby's in a while. YV doesn't like Arby's, so we don't usually go. It's a weird one. It's, it's really it, strange. It is because it's not. It's not burgers. It's like different, you know. But I think yeah, that's what makes it so good. Just, like, it's like ham sandwiches. <laughs> right. Exactly. Roast exactly. beef sandwich that don't. They do not look appealing. Yeah, they're. But but the, they taste good. Do you get but the, they look. Do you get the beef and cheddar <laughs> ones? Oh yeah. Yeah, beef, beef and cheddar always it's get good. the get the patin with it. I don't know if you guys have the patin at your Arby's. I don't think so. I, I I haven't. I don't think I've ever tried that. But I hear like so many people say it's delicious. It's so good if it's done right. It's perfect. Cheese curds, gravy, not chicken broth based gravy. It has to be freaking beef. Yeah, it's the only way to do it. <laughs> the only way to do it. It has to be beef. You don't want your your fries and cheese to taste like friggin' chicken noodle soup now, do you? Yeah, yeah. So with the um, with the the Templar and Ryman um, YouTube channel, did are you do you have any intentions of continuing with that? Do you want to go any more anywhere with it, or what's kind of the story of where it's going? So right now, unless Temp reaches out and says, "Hey, do you want to do something with this? Do you want to like revive it?" I don't think I'm going to touch it. I'm going to let it do what it do, you know? Just leave I'm, it. Like, since I switched to my new computer, I haven't logged into it. Like, I don't need to log into it. I don't need it for anything. Mm -hmm. And, like, I figured, well, if I want to do um, edited content, I may as well do it with my own branding. So since... I think since I got my new computer, I did a bunch of rebranding on my Twitch. Yeah. Because my background used to be the old Templar... Uh, Templar and oh, excuse me, Haley Burps. <laughs> they're they're coming everywhere. Yeah. Oh God. It's the beer. Uh, I, I, yeah, it really is. It really is. <laughs> I think when I first um, met you, it, it was was it was it in your username? Templar. No. No. No, it was just Ryan Man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but when I came in with Wade and Cody on the. The Tuesday night, Rin man, apple, uh, uh, apple juice. Some. I I still cannot Mario believe how long four they years truly four thought. years they've done it, and I thought it was I thought they were just memeing or something. I was like, <laughs> uh, okay. You never were like, there, there there's no end, right there. It's, I it's... didn't want to. At a certain <laughs> point, like you let it go on too long that you just can't say anything anymore. <laughs> Like, if I were, if I, I should have said something like maybe six months ago. Now, yeah. if I say anything, I'm the asshole. So, so it's good that I said something, right? Was it I that said something? I think it was. I think, so I think Lolly 
told them during our Pokemon showdown. Yeah. And they were like, oh, oh no. Cause they actually <laughs> typed out my name in the overlay to Rin Man. Yes, yes, yes. And I thought like, I thought it was a joke. So I messaged them like the day after. I'm like, oh my God, your overlay actually says Rin Man. I <laughs> thought it was a joke this whole time. <laughs> And, and freaking Wade, he responds with, we genuinely had no idea for the past four years. Cody messages me immediately after. Look, man, either we're horribly illiterate or we had the same hallucination for the past four years. So good. It was the funniest thing. It was so hilarious. It's funny. I loved it. It was so good. That's super, um, super funny. Yeah, so the, the Templar Ryman 3... Uh, I had that like some of that branding still mm -hmm. attached to my overlay and just me in general. I kind of like I, I it, you know, it, it was it was what I used to, I was used to to producing as. So I yeah. just kept doing it. And then eventually I was like, well, I don't log into it anymore. I should make my own thing. So I switched over my old overlay from like the Gaussian blur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Freaking callbacks everywhere. Um. I use like a Gaussian blur 20, 25% on the background, maybe even 30. Cause I, like, I didn't really need it to be super visible. I just wanted something in the background that wasn't some color black. pop. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I swapped it out from that to a bunch of just you know, geometry stuff, just like your lights in the background there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, only like a billion of them stacked <laughs> neatly. And I, I went into after effects, made like a quick, uh, mask. They put two layers, put a mask on the second layer and just made it look like it was waving and wobbling around with different colors. Yeah, that's super, super cool. I haven't really played with After Effects too much. It's a little it's intimidating. Terrifying. Yeah, you open up the app and it is terrifying. It's like, where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> None of the shortcuts you're used to work at all. Oh, like from like Premiere or from Premier, Photoshop? Yeah. Interesting. yeah, you can't. You're not allowed. The C to quickly access the razor tool and make a quick cut in your in your film. No. You don't cut on After Effects. Interesting. No cutting. Just you only add your effect in and then you re-export that to Premiere. That's all it's for. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, it's not super interesting. Still terrifying, though. If you don't know the layout, it is horrifying. And for a long time, I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, After Effects is super, super cool. People do like really cool stuff with it and add like crazy effects. Mm -hmm. As long as their computer can handle it, of course, and it's not a MacBook Pro. <laughs> we got, we're going to get you an upgrade, man. So um, I'm going to message everyone in Fireside. We're going to start a fund. I Let's just say I don't think that's necessary because I might have found one. Um, I found, so I, I've been, I have, I've been keeping an eye on NZXT's website for like some of the, like some of the builds they have. And they randomly just came back in stock a couple days ago with, I think it was an, uh, a 30, an EVGA 3090 and Ooh. a 3950X. I really wanted the 5950X, but I'm like 3950X is still going to be 18 times more powerful than my MacBook. So probably gonna my my you know mid-range desktop <laughs> is going to like high mid a mid-range at least it's still a thousand times better than your macbook at this moment it what's so frustrating is it has it has a i think a 9900 in it yeah like a 9900 like a super powerful processor and 64 gigs of ram and it has a pretty decent gpu it's just it's an amd gpu and it overheats it, it super That's overheats it. yeah like it, yeah the overheating immediately like your your 64 gigs of ram that's 16 now it's overheated <laughs> right. can't use it pretty much pretty much i mean even just like booting up the thing is like just booting up obs and everything i just immediately hear the fans start going crazy and this is a 2015 macbook air is that yeah yeah i was using this to do a lot of production stuff this is nugget by the way i, I was That's just nugget. gonna say that nugget's so cute and the sure logo cat. of course sure logo course. well yeah that came with where did that come with no came with something <laughs> yeah, um 
oh my old microphone the the pga 48 oh like the handheld sort of mm -hmm. uh stage vocalist um no nuggets my friend's cat oh she she thought it would be a much smaller sticker and she couldn't fit that on um her 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 married iguanas implement Ooh, an iguana iguanas are cool you know the married iguanas you know i don't know if i've ever heard of married you know iguanas it, you know how it it sounds kind of like that thing that looks similar to broccoli oh oh yeah maybe maybe yeah it <laughs> rhyme rhymes with pong <laughs> oh gotcha 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 <laughs> now you're getting it now now it kicked in now i got it yeah it's she was gonna she was gonna put a sticker on on her pong paddle but <laughs> I think uh, the sticker be... was way too big yeah I, think, I mean i think that'd be pretty interesting i like the i like the nugget sticker though the nugget sticker looks great it's very nice it's very he's so good the thing with MacBooks is like they actually are super powerful. I guess they just have to be used correctly because, yeah, I mean, there is a correct way to use a Mac to get it to last a lot longer. Like 2015 model MacBook Air, I've had it for a while, and most of the things I do on it is like Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything else though. Yeah. Otherwise, it just won't work too well. If you pair apple hardware with apple software it's insane the amount of difference you get like there's i've seen people edit 4k videos on a 2015 macbook air like it's nothing and you're just like like using final cut but then mm -hmm. using premiere pro it's just like a, a yeah. slow chugging mess and it's it's crazy how apple's optimization does that well the the thing i tell everyone about uh, well, first of all, Final Cut is optimized for Apple specifically, so it knows yeah. like it, it knows better the like how to work that better. Yeah. Whereas Premiere is just general optimized. It's that that's a very specific realm. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing I always tell people is Apple software is genius. Yeah. It's absolutely genius. They fell short on the hardware. Yeah. That's it. Otherwise, I think you would see a lot more Mac OS users on just computers in general i agree i like if they you know tried to compete i mean imagine if you could take some of these like gpus and stick them in a you know a, a, a tower that runs mac os that's optimized for it you know maybe like apple that, certified gpus is a hackintosh exactly exactly but apple that's an actual thing yeah apple's kind of apple's like really strict about like trying to crack down on hackintosh right yeah we had one at um at the digital media uh company we were i was working at mm -hmm. uh it just we don't know what happened but one day it just died interesting like something in the hardware just died i think it was we think it was the motherboard we never figured it out we waited way too long and everything got dusty and would have been worn out anyway yeah can't leave computer parts sitting doing nothing for too long yeah in the open nonetheless dust collecting spiders crawling in there gross yeah buying a computer is so interesting these days especially with all like the cryptocurrency mining and, Ooh, and yeah i mean between like you know people buying stuff for crypto mining or people buying stuff because they're working at home so much more now so they need a more powerful computer or people you know getting into youtube or twitch supply and demand yeah this is like the worst time ever to want to buy or build a computer it really is or get into guitar even yeah our guitar is like pretty yeah. sh short in stock uh yamaha makes really great guitars at pretty low cost uh -huh. they're for the most part sold out really yeah because hey, everyone and their dog is getting into guitar because there's nothing to do at home i mean guitar is pretty cool <laughs> it's pretty wild i personally prefer the kazoo i mean the kazoo is pretty cool especially it's pretty dope. especially when you, when you play my heart will go on <laughs> <laughs> so do you hum with a kazoo do you like hum the notes and it like kind of kazooifies yeah. it yeah you you hum into it you don't blow into a kazoo you hum into it gotcha gotcha and uh, the vibrations and you know the ex it's the the exhalation and the vibrations that do it uh-huh because you are there's a, a very thin membrane of plastic mm -hmm. 
that's over top of that little hole. Interesting. That's what makes the sound. Very interesting. Just the way it's flapping constantly. I guess I'm used to like like a flute or a recorder where you just blow straight into it and then like you finger yeah. long and that kind of well, changes the And also the pitch. like there are different kazoos, right? So that was, like a, just does a, not look like a, a kazoo. Metal <laughs> oh no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise it is. Yeah. Got a secondary use, right? You could use it for both, really, if you want to. I mean, um, when in Rome. <laughs> I, when in, what, what's it called? When um, in Canada. Oh God, when in Canada. No, I was thinking of a different one. It, is is marijuana, marijuana is what's fully legalized in Canada everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. So, totally, totally legalized. Very interesting. 420. Yeah, 420 on, on 10 17. That's what I tell people. There you go. Yeah, October 17th. Was that the day? Legal. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to still... tell people, oh, we're going to 420 because of 10 17, baby. And everyone gets confused. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows what's going on. They think I'm already on something else. Oh, dude, no freaking joke. Um, When I was just at work a couple days ago, I ran like just one random guy I was helping. We we're just he was just asking he was asking me like how's your day going how you doing i'm like oh i'm doing good how about you and he's like dude i just took acid like 20 minutes ago <laughs> and i'm like oh, starting no. to feel things and i was like what uh, what <laughs> you can't say that right i'm like i hope you enjoy the closest it. thing i've, I've have a safe trip right <laughs> exactly that's probably the proper um, thing to say the closest thing i've ever had to that was i was walking downtown with my buddy a few years back yeah and this guy comes up to me he's like hey you guys doing all right and I'm like yeah doing good you yeah i'm doing pretty great you want to buy some coke <laughs> just so honest yeah <laughs> yeah it's just you want to buy some coke my buddy and i look at each other we're like uh, we're we're good thank you for the offer really appreciate it uh we're good oh man i i would probably we're I'd, we're fine i'd be such a smart ass i'd be like no i prefer sprite you got any sprite do you have any pepsi you have any pepsi what about pepsi yeah you probably just you got the coke is pepsi okay oh you probably just shake his head and be like get out of here i couldn't be a drug dealer for that reason and many others yeah oregon's interesting i think they just like decriminalized all drugs in oregon so yeah yeah so you can uh, like if you're selling that's a big problem or if you're like have a big amount on you but i mean from what i read you can have like anything on you and and not get thrown in jail it's super interesting i think that's a good way to do it actually yeah yeah. Like to me, that's a shock because that's such a bold power play that yeah. Oregon has just done. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, guys, boom, yeah, do I, it." I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely of the mindset that, like, if you're, if you are an adult, you should be able to do, you know, if it's not harming others, you know, you should be able to make whatever if you're decision an adult, you want for yourself. Make your own mistakes. Exactly. Exactly. If it doesn't hurt other people, perfect. I totally agree. I totally do. And I mean, I think like if the if they're going to offer anything, it should be offering rehab and assistance if you wish to get mm -hmm. out of it. But if you yeah. don't wish to get out of it, you are an adult. If you want to drink a, a liter of vodka and go crazy, if you want to, you know, smoke the, the veggies, if you want to, you know, walk into a store and say you just took acid you want 20 some, minutes some ago nice vegetable oil <laughs> exactly then like we, we got you covered be free be yourself you know you don't you know live your best life as long as you're not harming others and you're not like selling to kids or anything crazy like that you know be free be yourself go wild i totally agree just have a good time with it you know right right i mean i think some the argument some people make is is just like the harder and harder you kind of go into drugs like the more it can start to taint your decisions about what yeah yeah like yeah. some people who are like extremely addicted you might start like stealing or, or robbing or doing stuff like that but i feel like that's not the core well, issue at a certain point when in addiction where you really need that fix mm -hmm. you're going to resort to anything to uh 
to get, get that fix. Right. In my case, like I, I'm on a, I'm on a prescription medication, which I forgot to take, which I will do after the show. Um, whenever, like I, they swapped the, they swapped the brand on me. Uh, same, same thing, just different brand of uh, medication. Mm -hmm. Big pharma. Um, Big pharma. So when <laughs> uh, I missed one day maybe about a month-ish, month and a half ago. And I, I did like the whole withdrawal thing yeah. in a day. Like, like, have you ever seen somebody on, on like a horrible, horrible, what, what is mostly illegal drug? Amsterdam, that's <laughs> it. When in Amsterdam. When in Amsterdam. That Ooh. was the joke with this. There you go. And that was, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, Amsterdam's good. I've never been. I would love to go to Amsterdam. Although I feel like Amsterdam is so well known for its, its, you know, its, its weed and everything. But I feel like when like, it was the one in Rome joke, that's what I was trying to think of. Why do I have a feeling that, you know, coming from Canada and Washington, California kind of areas, I feel like if we were to go to Amsterdam, we would just not be blown away. We'd be like, I mean, this is, this is good, but y'all ever been to, uh, Y'all ever been to the West Coast? No, Amsterdam doesn't matter. You think so? I know so. I haven't no been, so. but my old boss has been. Yeah. You know how like they have we have coffee shops, they have weed shops. Yeah. Casually like that. Right, right, right. A lot cheaper too. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? <laughs> See, that's that's the cool thing is we literally just talk about whatever. That's exactly <laughs> what I want. I want to go everywhere. I we were on something there. We were talking about something. Said big right withdrawals mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah on the on the new medication um i did the whole withdrawal thing in a whole day like the the like violent shaking yeah uh like it was actually like like this but i wasn't doing it oh no um it was like the cold sweats the the hot flashes the vomit everything oh no literally everything and then like that was just because i missed a a pill it, now, in hindsight, it may have been that I was transitioning between two brands and then all of a sudden missed one entirely. So that is possible. Like amplified it? I, I am inclined to believe that that is probably what happened. I was, I was, you know, all of a sudden I'm on a different brand and then I drop it completely. Like that's a shock to your body. Right, right, right. But phew, man, it man. was, it was not fun. Yeah. Stuff like that is scary. It can definitely be scary, especially with like oh, how it's terrifying how like dependent people can get on it. Like, it, yeah. it can absolutely be scary. It's it's terrifying when you hear stories about like doctors prescribing like opiates and stuff for people who have like back pain or like like actually need you know. I have a personal opiates. story about that, but I'll leave that off of uh, off of the webernet. So I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about it off like off off camera. Off camera. Um, you know, I, I just remembered, I did want to ask, cause we're talking about Templar and Ryman, like your whole, like your YouTube and everything. Yeah. Um, the other one I did want to ask about is your podcast, your Josh, the, what is that? There's nobody, nobody here named, named Josh. Yes. Nobody here named Josh. <laughs> Please tell me about that. I think right when I first met you, there was kind of like an in joke with everyone about nobody here named Josh. And it totally went over my head. So we haven't done it for a long time. Um, and the reason like at the beginning of September, everyone's internet was garbage. Yeah. Because everyone needed the internet. Everyone took the bandwidth for themselves. Yeah. I, like Kevin and I couldn't do the show. And eventually like that went on so long where we just didn't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, like you put off something for so long. Next thing you know, you have a book on your desk for 15 years that you've been meaning to read. I feel um, that. Yeah, so do I. Um, not necessarily 15 years, but I I get it. Yeah. So like Kevin's been going through a lot of stuff personally as well. I'm not going to get into that because it's it's his life, it's his business. Yeah. Um. So we just haven't gotten to be able to do the do the show, and it's very upsetting for me mostly, and for my uncle Steve because he really enjoyed the show. Yeah. What was um, the podcast based around? What was it about? Yes. Yes. Everything. And anything. <laughs> everything. Literally everything. Whatever we can come up with. 
we would just we would hop in a discord call and we would talk about it yeah. and why i was so hesitant well not even hesitant but so adamant on recording my own audio in case you need a backup yeah was we used um something called craigbot which records the audio of I've heard a discord of that. call yeah 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 i've heard yeah, of that it it works but if there are any you know screw ups any any roadblocks along the way you only have the one audio file mm. it like That's separates why I wanted it out to record mine i'm looking every now and then watching the waveform yeah yeah i i see my the go xlr it's it's going i think i think we're good and everyone yeah, will I, let it's us just force a habit yeah and I'm sure everyone will let us know if if audio is super funky and I'll, I'll so oh, I, I'm sure I actually have um some like just lo-fi kind of just very subtly kind of going in the background just to kind of amplify it hopefully a little bit do you hear it I don't hear it okay I might have not so put the routing corrected I think it might be routed correctly but discord has a noise gate that it does automatically oh do you so that's probably it Here's a question I have been dying to ask, and I hope somebody, I hope you or somebody has an answer. When you're talking on Discord, you know the green bars that fill around the yeah. screen? Is there a way to turn that off? I don't think so. I've like just dove in so much into settings trying to figure out how, because like in the overlay, it they ever so slightly sometimes pop up and it kind of drives me crazy. I'm like a pixel perfectionist so yeah no i get that i think it's just so like you know who's talking yeah even on the gaming overlay for discord they like it's an opacity based thing but they increase mm -hmm. like they increase not i guess decrease the opac no opaque is the not see-through yeah <laughs> they increase the opacity so you can actually see like this person is making noise they are the one speaking yeah, have you I seen, think it's just that. Have you seen those overlays on like Among Us where it'll have like all the different people lined up and then when you talk, yeah, yeah I want to do something like that. I really, really I think you would, you would, I, everyone says that you wouldn't be able to do Among Us. I think you would be surprisingly good. Oh, I would, I would devour at Among Us. I, feel I am certain that there is a whole like deviant side of you that you have not told anyone about <laughs> when i i think when i did my music stream a couple days ago i was playing have you heard a little piece of heaven by avenge sevenfold mm -hmm. yeah it's like a super dark crazy song and i was just it's one of my favorite songs of all time and i was playing it on the piano and zach was just freaking out like why <laughs> is this man playing this song right now I'm why like, does he know this well you see zach i'm like y'all think i'm mr rogers but like He's come to the dark side. Exactly. I, I was born into the dark side. I know I've always... We got cookies. Exactly. I've always loved, like in movies and games and everything, I've always loved the villains way more than the heroes. I feel like they're you so know what? more Same. interesting. Yeah, they're like so more... They're more human, you know? Like good villains. They, act, they, they have proper fleshed out backstories whereas right. your hero is like i was an ordinary bloke and then a spider bit my hand and now i shoot webs and climb cool right right whereas and like then superman's like my planet's dead but because your son is different than my son i'm superhuman pretty much i can i i used to be able to leap over tall buildings now i just fly <laughs> right Right. And then, like Deadpool, Deadpool had a, had a actually he he had a pretty cool he had a cool, but he was more of an anti-hero. Yeah. Oh, Ryan so, Reynolds like, did clearly, Deadpool it, so it, good. Just focus more on villains, writers, yeah. writer, please. Have you seen um? Have you seen Joker? Yes. Oh, yes, I, I love that. I love that. I actually too. have a bit of trivia for you. Yeah. So you know how like there's a giant title in the middle of the movie that says the Joker or yeah. not in the middle, but at the beginning right that takes it up pops. the whole screen. Yeah. That was done with film. Interesting. Real film in a dark room. Interesting. They made like the whole title sequence like that. And then they digitally imported it to put it like over top of the, um, of the movie. I wonder why they, why they chose to do that. Uh, the director just liked the look of it better yeah. than any of the digital stuff. Is you're never going to be able to be able to recreate film. Yeah, it has its own look. 
That's true. I think Quentin Tarantino pretty much does all of his stuff in like old school film. I think so. Or he's gonna it's getting a little bit toasty, so I'm taking off the the, the Unleash the Hounds branded uh bandana. It looks good though. I'm happy. I'm happy you like it. Feels comfortable. <laughs> I'm happy. Like wifey, she, she, she is super creative with all that. I have no idea where that all came from. She just, she does a good job and seems she saw an opportunity and she went for it. Yeah. I think she just wanted to make our pups look good, honestly. And she was like, Hey, why not? I mean, your dogs already look good you without that, the apparel because they're dogs. True. Zeph, if I ever see you in person, you're like push me aside and go for yes, the dogs. I'm gonna shake your hand, probably give you a hug, but I'm also gonna pay a lot of attention to your dogs. So every every everyone who comes over, they they just like lay on the ground and just let the dogs love all over them. They're pretty cute, <laughs> Can even though you they're blame them? they're snoozing now. That at least they're hanging out with me though. Wifey's wifey's like banging out there and i don't hopefully you don't hear any banging or anything in the background i, I don't hear anything hopefully the noise but, gate is working <laughs> but she, yeah, i don't hear any of that i think it's just quite enough the the sure sm7b okay. is pretty uh pretty localized which is very nice yeah yeah it's been a it's been a good mic so far i know i i always wanted to get it more for stuff just outside of streaming like folk like podcasting and youtube and stuff like that otherwise i mean the blue yeti was pretty decent but the the, the blue yeti worked real nice honestly yeah I and then you lot. showed me like your all your noise skate settings and all that no that was for the go xlr it was yeah you showed yeah. me all of your your mixer settings and i was so happy yeah <laughs> it, even listening like on headphones to, to the blue yeti like some old clips and stuff and then listening to the sm7b i'm like holy crap this sounds so different oh there is a <laughs> noticeable immediate difference but like it's a good microphone yeah it is it is it, it's also i think this one's a dynamic right and the yeti yeah, is so that a, one's a dynamic condenser. the yeti is a usb mic uh i think i i think most usb mics are condenser yeah i think it was if condenser. i'm not mistaken it, it like kind of tried to pick up all the sound in the room and this one is kind of like sucking the sound into it more so yeah well this one's a condenser yeah yeah so the gain is the gain's pretty low actually all things considered mm -hmm. but like it's it's not bad i can go i can go fairly close to it and because i have compression uh, settings on my board it doesn't go super loud that proximity effect you can add fake proximity simply by adding a little bit of bass to your mix i was just gonna you ask can add, that uh, just add a little bit of proximity and then go a little bit closer to add more it's fantastic so when we you're when you're like getting closer to the mic is your hand on the bass meter kind of adjusting no. it no just now it was but oh um if i'm getting close to the mic i'll just grab the mic i'll be like is this really what's happening right now listen to me <laughs> Yeah, because usually it's something stupid that happened in a game. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Game, just work with me. Yeah. Give me the easy win. How, what's been some of the your favorite games you've been playing on stream? Like, do you Breath think of you've, the Wild. Breath of the Wild. It's so good. <laughs> do you, do you, it's, it's incredible. Do you think you have kind of like a genre or niche or is it just like of games you kind of want to play? Or is it just kind of like whatever I'm, I'm feeling, we're going to dive into that? pretty much whatever I'm feeling, you yeah. know? Breath of the Wild, like I hadn't played it yet until this year. Um, technically last year, bleeding into this year with my 24 hour stream, but because I hadn't actually sat, like, sat down and properly played through it, I knew a lot about the game, but I didn't I didn't know how to do it. So yeah. I I started playing, it was like, this is, this is awesome. This is incredible. It's so much fun. It's like I am immediately immersed in this wonderful fantasy realm that is Legend of Zelda, but different. Honestly, the physics, like the physics, oh my God, the, yeah. the paragliding, the the fact that you can just do, you can get to places in so many different ways is, is astounding. Did you ever play A Link to the Past? I have not. A Link Between Worlds. I have. Uh, is that the one where Link like morphs into the wall and can kind of yes. go around stuff? I, I played a, like a couple okay. hours of that one. Twilight Princess. I have not. 
Skyward Sword. I have not. Okay. Or Wind in, Waker, I have not. Yeah, Wind Waker, I knew. Um, so in um, A Link Between Worlds, did you ever hit the chickens? Uh, I think so, and they would come and attack, right? They go crazy. Yes. And you can do that in Breath of the Wild. I think in Ocarina of Time, they did that too. I don't think there are a lot of cuckoos there. That's their actual name, by the way. Cuckoos. cuckoos. It's incredible. What a... Um, uh, what a name. If you... <laughs> I, I was in a call with Ice Beams earlier. Yeah. And <laughs> he, he we were trying to figure out, like, why is this a thing? The, the like, what? Who did this and why? And we couldn't find anything. But Ice, he says to me, I found this, though. If you get an enemy, like, if you bring a chicken to an enemy and, and you're holding the chicken mm -hmm. and the enemy hits you, the chicken will go after the enemy. Yeah, yeah. So immediately I took it to the highest ext extreme I could find that is lower than a boss. Did you go to a I Lionel? Found a Lionel. Yes. I don't know if it was a white or a black Lionel. Either way, I fought too many Lionels and that's how you know they're either white or black. Yeah. So I know it had 4,000 health. So I went up to it with a chicken and you're like, and come a at me. A swarm of chickens took out, I think, 200 health. Wow. From this Lionel. It was the best thing ever. That's awesome. Was that live on stream? It wasn't on stream. Oh. I might do it on stream next time I do Breath of the Wild. I'm making a good clip. Um, it'd be hilarious. I do want to practice the boomy zoomies, though. The wind bombs. Yeah, those are crazy. There's some. Cr have you looked them up? Uh, I, I have, yeah. I, the, um, some of the. Some of the. I think speedrunners use tactics like that to like yeah yeah a lot uh, of clips a lot of um glitches there's btbs which is bullet time bounce which is where like you kind of shield surf off of something go into bullet time and you bounce off of an enemy and go fly. flying yeah 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 alternatively you can call it a bounce that boy because you bounce off of that boy <laughs> bounce that boy uh, I like that boomy zoomy the, the bomb go boom you go zoom there you go Self-explanatory. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, I don't know a lot of those tactics at all. Um, stasis launching. That one, a lot of people kind of figured that one out immediately. Like you put like a boulder or a tree in stasis. You hit Get it a bunch it. and you grab onto it and right. just go fly and it's awesome. Yeah, there's um. Have, I, have you gotten the Have you gotten the the metal cart yet? I think in like the volcano area. Yes. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Apparently, you can stack a metal cart on another metal cart and actually just fly. Yes. Yes. I see. You can videos make an of that. awkward flying machine, and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's, people are I, so. I actually love it. People are so creative with Breath of the Wild. I think that's why it's just one of those games that's going to stand the test of time, you know? It's because the physics of it and, and the ways to do like the stasis stuff is just so unique and special. I think. It's not going to necessarily withstand the test of time. I don't think anything can. Yeah. But Except something Mozart. like Wind Waker, <laughs> for example. If you look back at original GameCube Wind Waker, not the HD remaster. Yeah. Actual original GameCube Wind Waker. Those graphics are on par with stuff you'll see today. Yeah. They're amazing. It is incredible. It was an incredible storyline. It Like the, the plot twist was completely unexpected completely everything was i mean maybe not the boat one the boat one i've been spoiling for everyone um because he's a boat it's yeah. hilarious wait link? um link is a link no is a... link's not the boat oh okay uh i don't want to actually like spoil it in case some people care okay but no spoilers no spoilers <laughs> um, i'll tell you i'll tell you after the recording because it's it's the best thing for me okay um like all of Wind Waker, it was just great. The the battle mechanics, the way it taught you how to do things, the way it handled the puzzles. The only two issues I have with it: finding Triforce shards. Yeah. You have to go into the ocean, play a guessing game for a little bit, then eventually you might find like a, a treasure chart that tells you this is where it is. Then you have to play a guessing game on that square, interesting, on that large chunk. And then you have to play a fishing game with the guessing game. Interesting. Uh, and you need a shitload of items. Hmm. You need like 8,000 items for this game. 
It's weird. Do you cook at all in Wind Waker? Like in Breath no. of the Wild? No. No. Very interesting. Wind Waker, Wind Waker on its own, like that, great game. Breath yeah. of the Wild, I think the fact that you can, just the way you can interact with the things in the game, I yeah. think that'll be kind of a marker. I don't think it's going to stand a test of time necessarily in more of a colloquial sense, yeah. but I think it'll be a marker for other games on if they can stand the test of time. Yeah, isn't there... Have you ever played, what is it, Half-Life 2? Is it Half-Life? No. Mm, there's this... I think I, it's... I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like supposed to be very physics-based and, and like... It was a gravity gun? I think so, yeah. It was like really ahead of its time and people were talking... I did Portal. That Port one I did. Portal was wild. Portal looks really cool. It was so much fun. Portal looks really, really, really cool. Um, I did have a, a couple more questions I wanted to ask you, though, right, man? Yeah, one hundred percent. Let's do it. So, in All terms of, in terms of like where you're at right now with Twitch, where do you see yourself taking your Twitch and your YouTube channel in the next like three to six months? Like, what are your plans kind of going in the future? Man, I'm glad you didn't say year. <laughs> three to six years. Or three to six years. I yeah. mean, that's way more long term. Um, well, like the, the usual question is like in a year, what what do you think you're going to be at? You went like a, yeah. a more, like a much more. Sure. Like mo that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is, wow. Um, Three to six months. I'm probably going to be doing similar stuff to what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been considering doing edited content on the VOD channel that I have on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't been posting Breath of the Wild to that because I kind of jumped in at the middle when I started the channel. I was like, well, it's mm. not going to canonically, well, not canonically. Um, what's the word? Like in sequence like, in a row? Sort like of. Out of order? It's it's like a weird consist. I don't know. I can't. It's a film term. Continuity. Continuity. Continuity wise, it gotcha. doesn't make sense okay. to jump in at the middle. So I just stopped uploading the Breath of the Wild stuff to that, and I'm uploading everything new that I start. Hmm. Gotcha. So gotcha. Terraria with Squarby, um, friggin' Pokemon White 2, um, whatever else I'm doing, the randomized Nuzlocke. Yeah, the Nuzlocke. Uh, Super are crazy. Rubber Ross World. Oh, God. So pretty much Nuzlocke, that's just the term you use that when Pokemon faints, Pokemon's really dead. Like in the Nuzlocke yeah, term, well, right? It's, a Nuzlocke is a is a set of rules. Gotcha. It's not, it, that is one of them. Uh, the first Pokemon on that route, that is what you catch. From the instant you get Pokeballs, that rule is set in place. Does that include like you, you multiple can't... of the same Pokemon? That's another rule. I'll get into that in one okay, second. Okay, so sorry. let's say Pokemon Generation 4. Mm -hmm. You have to go through patches of grass before you can get Pokeballs. And Generation 1. Do not fight in those patches of grass. Otherwise, it, you just can't. You can't. You forfeit those routes. Gotcha. Um, so just you have to run away? Go, yeah, just go buck wild. So what you're referring to is... Um, like the, say, like the, the, du the duplication clause. Or not duplication, but something something on along those lines uh doubles that's it the doubles clause mm -hmm. if you have a pokemon like you let's say you have a ghastly and you run into a haunter you're allowed to skip that haunter and go to something else that's of a different family sure sure because it evolves just into so you don't have like a, like a whole team of like the six ghastlies and haunters or gengars right just a little bit underbalanced right yeah those looks are really, really cool. It makes it fair, but challenging. I, feel, I, I I really like stuff like that. Um, I kind of unknowingly did something like that when I first started streaming, when I was playing Final Fantasy VII, like the, the OG one. Um, I did like a no materia challenge throughout the whole game. So didn't use any of the magic at all throughout the entirety of it. And it was, I mean, Final Fantasy VII is a really easy game in and of itself. So it wasn't that difficult, but it was, it was different to play it in a way like I've never played it before. I just thought it's a reverse mage challenge. Pretty much. It was like, an I old, like that. Yeah. I, towards the end of it, I, I was like, you know, this whole game, I've pretty much just been pressing one button just to attack nonstop with a couple potions here and there and a couple other things. So maybe it wasn't as mm. cool as it could have been, but 
it was it was interesting you know i feel like game when you do that when you like have these rules for yourself when you have rules and bumpers you know it makes you think more creatively you know you really do. You do like i found like even with pokemon i never used stat changing moves like harden or swords dance or screech oh, yeah, yeah. dragon dance stuff like that sand attack <laughs> Like, I would never use them because I could just mash A the whole time and win. Right, pretty much. But now, like, I, I have a limited amount of Pokemon. I I want to make the best of it. I don't want to over level because that would make it boring. So I'll use the stat changing moves. I'll boost my stats. I'll lower the enemy's stats. I'll use certain types of moves. Pay attention to what's physical, what's special. Yeah. Really look into all all the stats all this like everything i analyze all my information that i have i'm like all right well what what can i do here i have these three decisions i'll do this one because this seems like it'll work best for me yeah and like sometimes it works sometimes it horribly fails and i die and lose six members of my team and cry a little bit inside so what happens if you if you're doing a nuzlocke and all six of your pokemon die is that just game over permanently if all six Pokemon in your party die, you have to resort to what you have previous, like what you've caught that's in your box. Gotcha, and if gotcha. you have no Pokemon left at all, you have to restart. From the very beginning. From the very beginning. In Oof. my case, I'm doing a randomized Nuzlocke, so I don't know what's coming my way. Yeah. I don't know what the starters are going to be. I don't know. I could run into a wild Garchomp that knows Dragon Rage, and I could lose within 20 seconds. Yeah. I lost my first run to that. Oh, no. Yeah, I might be at this for a while. Randomizers are so, I like, so much fun. I feel like when you play a really fun game and the gameplay is so, like, immersive and you love it, I wish all games just had a randomizer that you could, like, unlock after beating the game, you know? I think that would be wild. That'd I be wish so cool. the more developers, you know, worked on those for their own thing rather than like having third party do it. Cause that's a little, now you're getting to a weird sketchy area where is this yeah. safe for my computer, my files, right? How am I going to scan this? Well, it, it's just as a whole other realm there. Yeah. Watching, um, there's this one streamer I watch occasionally called Jesus here's toast and he plays a lot of bloodborne and he has like a hacked PS4 where he like randomizes it. And it's, it's so cool to watch me like just seeing like end game enemies at the very beginning, but with like the weaker stats of entry level mm -hmm. enemies and just like, oh, that'd be so much fun to play. Like why can't, and everyone in chat is like, this is so cool. It's just like, why can't game developers do something like that? You know? Yeah, honestly, there's a game I used to play like a bunch of called Undertale. Oh yeah, and... yeah, yeah. Yeah, coming up pretty soon. I'm actually going to be doing like an Undertale Corruption stream, which is Ooh. like almost a randomizer, but more like shuffle the sprites for total chaos. Yeah. Some sounds, um, the, the text that comes up. So you can get like instead of welcome to the underground, you can get the text. Hey, kid, want to buy a hot dog? It's just 20 G. <laughs> Interesting. So you like yeah. randomize the dialogue. That's that's interesting. But yeah. Someone hinted at the possibility that an Undertale randomizer exists, and I might try to look for that to see if I can get like a random battles for each thing, you know? That could be cool. Just walking through the ruins, all of a sudden, Megalovania kicks in. I'm like, oh no. That could be really, oh, really, really God. cool, honestly. No, I think that, I think, I think randomizers are really cool. I wish, I wish more they games are. had stuff like that. Um, one question. I thought would be really really cool to ask is like now that you've been street how long have you been streaming for well over a year right so i well starting on youtube it's been well 2016 i think it was september 3rd okay so f almost five years really. wow wow how, how long have you been like made just on twitch just on twitch i think roughly a year ish gotcha gotcha because you were you were live streaming the same way we do on twitch also on youtube yeah yeah gotcha gotcha yeah uh, some people some people really like streaming on youtube i i feel like if twitch doesn't fix a lot of their problems that they have like and and youtube keeps making moves 
It'll be interesting to see in a few years. It's just the community of Twitch that holds it all together, you know? It's qu not really it there. It really is. It's not really there YouTube with YouTube. Is, it's a lot more toxic. And just the interfaces... Yeah. Uh, fr from a user perspective, the interface, it sucks. It's garbage. It's it's terrible. Yeah. YouTube live streaming, it doesn't work very well. It, I don't, it's weird. There's a, not a lot of customization that you can do as the content creator, like they allow you to do on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Um... On Twitch, obviously, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that nobody would even know about if all content creators didn't say anything. Yeah. Um, but YouTube, everyone talks about what's wrong with the site because like the only way to do it or to, to get help rather with from YouTube is by publicly stating on their Twitter like, hey, <laughs> YouTube here's help. an issue. <laughs> right. Yeah, I see those all the time. I mean, I see them a little bit for you know, Twitch here and there, but yeah, the YouTube support Twitter page is a real thing. <laughs> it's pretty intense. It really, there, really you'd is. You'd think that you would, you would, it would be really nice, in my opinion, as a user of the, the Webernets, I, I think <laughs> it would be great if they had a, 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 a technical support, um, yeah sort of tab for for the uploaders and content creators okay for youtube um and like so you didn't if you were like a verified channel or a big channel you didn't have to contact your youtube representative and then they have to jump through a bunch of hoops so you can get your answers and then you're left waiting in the dark for like a week or two about why is all of my people here getting banned on my live stream right right that was the whole thing for a while that's really interesting uh, an uploader called Markiplier, he, um, like half of his chat was getting banned. Interesting. For, for emote use. But that's what you do on live streams. Right, right, right. And he had to, he had to talk to YouTube and like, hey, guys. This is a thing. Susan Wojcinski, what is up? Yeah. <laughs> These people have paid money to do stuff in the live streams to be a youtube like like a like a member right right like what they were having problems guys with people <laughs> using emotes well it's overuse of emotes oh, of emotes it's like just spamming it was them what it was but like the whole thing was it's a big channel so mark even said in the stream i'm doing this thing we're going to do different outcomes for different things vote using these two emotes and put mm. it in the chat the one i see more of we will do because they don't have a poll they don't have slash poll right right which why does market market player does he stream on twitch at all or is he exclusive every to now YouTube? and then you'll see some gotcha. some twitch streams from him on uh on occasion normally it's during the three peens in a pod podcast gosh gotcha <laughs> wonderful name that is an, that, that's an awesome name that really 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 is. really is it's incredible um so n since you've been streaming for like quite a while on twitch and on youtube um if you could go back and kind of like give yourself i guess like a, just a really solid piece of advice like what is something you would tell yourself or at least something you wish you had known beforehand Zep, before you i'm, I'm streaming? following your twitter i know this question <laughs> <laughs> what is it what is it <laughs> <laughs> just just a quick twitter plug for you oh zephyr's xp on twitter I follow actually, him now i actually have quite a few questions here so that was that was just the next one i i mean i think that's a really cool answer just to kind of get from anybody because you can like really get a sense of where they started yeah. and kind of where they've grown 100%, you know you totally can um i would tell myself like look into twitch more start there yeah. start with twitch like, sure, YouTube. keep doing stuff on YouTube. Meet the people you want to meet. But look into Twitch. I still would have met One Heart Heroes. Yeah. And awesome that guys. would have led to, again, me meeting you as well. Because I met them through you. But the way I met One Heart Heroes was I wrapped up a live stream. And then I saw they were doing an Undertale live stream. And I was like, I love Undertale. Yeah. I just did this. Right. Hello. Did you raid them or just pop in? There was no raiding. I just... Oh. YouTube doesn't have that. The closest thing really? you have to a raid is like the creator says the channel and then everyone goes in. There's no notification. It's just sudden influx of people. It's, even, it's really weird. Even now? On YouTube? I'm pretty sure, yeah. 
that's 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 why it's so interesting like coming from the twitch side and just seeing such like critical aspects of twitch not even being you know a common thing on youtube yeah. i mean it's they could they could strange. be all have, we'll have to like look them up and kind of verify that but but if they're not that's that's citation needed yeah citation needed exactly <laughs> exactly um do you think you want to do any like original content on youtube maybe anything that's not even just vod edited or just kind of like its own original recording just for youtube kind of thing have you thought about it in the future yeah i think once i'm sitting in a better position uh just in in real life and how that is i think yeah i would i would love to set some time aside to actually make a project the issue is I'm a film student. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't watch movies. <laughs> Why would I do that? I didn't grow up with TV, so Netflix is really weird to me. Yeah. Um, but like I, uh, there, uh, like I said, like I said, Markiplier earlier, he did um, like a heist with Markiplier, which is like a multi multi ending sort of series that you could choose the outcome of interesting with different uh annotations leading to different videos with all each choice it was incredible there was like a date with markiplier who killed markiplier like there were so many things interesting there, it's that he did they're cinematic and uh unis Onis was another one yeah despite being as goofy as it was uh memento mori like you you can't if anyone who's watching this, by the way, or listening to this, get that reference. Shout out to you. Shout that's out to wild. you. Shout yeah. Hi, Layla. Oh, boy. Layla's just being Layla. Aww, <laughs> she she Layla. does this so much. This is like a thing with her now. See, she's just like, give me attention Aww, and love. She wants a hug. She does. She does. She she like pushes herself against you, too. She's adorable wifey said the other night oh, she's not supposed to say this but she said might be tattletelling but she said layla was her favorite oh <gasps> i know oh my god you're not supposed to say that i thought her favorite would have been ellie i think ellie's my favorite <laughs> yeah ellie's it's okay booker i'm here for you <laughs> <laughs> so boogie is so snooty and attitudey and like he, oh yeah he's so sassy he is so he's the sassiest dog i've ever met in my life and he just kind of will like he's lay got there massive personality he does and he'll just lay there and just kind of just look at you and <laughs> just do these like little howls and i'm like what are you what what and layla she's she's adorable they're Layla all just adorable. approaches and and compresses herself against you like love me human yeah she forcibly. does ellie's just she's a sweetheart though she just wants to cuddle and love and be your best friend all day every day she's so good do you um do you have any for friends do you have any pets uh well my mom does mm -hmm. she has two black german shepherds cookie Ooh, and apollo i love german shepherds so much Apollo is such a sweet boy. Yeah. You have no idea. He found a rock in the backyard. Yeah. And he presented it gently. Oh, it's so, like like look us. what I found. And this is the rock. Oh. I've kept the rock. That's cute. That's cute. So you gonna focus on the rock <laughs> focus on the rock. Camera, there you go. Oh, there it goes. Way better than my Sony's autofocus. My Sony autofocus it's, is crap. It's a Logitech <laughs> webcam. There you go. It's not good. I, Sony needs to learn something from my, my camera. I feel like when I look back on my VODs, my camera is like always hunting for focus. I think it's the microphone right here. So I try not to have it like too far out here. But like, you know what? It might be a combination of that and the the uh, the PS5. Maybe because it's because it's like kind of within frame. I feel like, I like it's it's within frame. It feels mm. like it's supposed to be a prominent element. Yeah. In just the framing, mm. and even the microphone in front of you feels like it could be its own prominent element. Yeah. What, usually when I'm watching, if I go back and watch the vods, it'll like kind of like hunt to right here, and then sometimes focus in and out. So I've had to change the aperture. Right now, just with that, it's been focusing like it was watching your hands. Like oh god. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good autofocus but the new sony cameras like i think it's the a7 III or a7 s3 or something have you checked them out at all 
Well, I don't want to be sad, so no. They're I haven't been looking at cameras. I can't afford any. Yeah, they're they're. Oh, that's the thing with like camera gear and and lenses and just all that. It's 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 so easy to spend. For for my projects, I have all my own gear. Like I have my own uh, boom mic with the, like the the furry blimp over oh, it too. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, I have um just all of my own equipment because I thought I was gonna be like. So I thought I was going to be using all of it. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, for a camera, I couldn't afford anything else because anything else would have been like a crappy, like wish camcorder. I'm going to be honest. Phones, especially iPhones, have incredible yeah. videography. Like you could literally just get like a. I can shoot gimbal. 4K on my iPhone. Yeah, yeah, and the and it it's looks. Incredible. I mean, it's the sensor's only so big, so it's not gonna you know have that depth of feel yeah. and bokeh and everything. But like, it, it's pretty insane how good like these these freaking smartphones take video. It's it's wild. Like I've seen some people use their phone as their webcam for streaming and it's yeah it's like that middle well, ground with apple it's it's weird with windows too because like i don't think you can do apple to windows easily i i think there's like some software you can download where it like screen mirrors to it no there's um i think there's one that elgato just released there, it might be from elgato oh but it's like if it's uh, if it's elgato i know it's safe yeah I know it's not a virus that was my biggest issue everything El i looked at was a virus elgato is like the apple i feel like of the streaming world just like each part is really good but when they're all connected together you're like i mean it, the ecosystem each part is really good on their own but together you are it, it is i you know i can't use an analogy that's not inappropriate <laughs> what what's the saying the the sum of the parts are greater than the whole or the whole is greater than the sum the whole is greater than the sum of its parts i think that's the same i think that's the same that sounds right yeah throughout could be wrong throughout your entire you know years you've been making content and streaming has there been like any particular highlight or just like a moment or two that's just been just a big highlight of streaming or creating content there's a couple actually. Um, hitting Twitch affiliate was a pretty big one for me. Yeah, that was so like that was so cool. Like enough people stopped in, thought they liked the content, and hit the follow button. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Because I, I legally I am not allowed to fit as many followers as I have in a room. <laughs> but mostly that that's because of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I can say that hitting Twitch affiliate <laughs> is such it, it's it's I don't want to say um, it like validates. I don't know. It's just it's so so exciting because you know that there well, are people like, there. Think, think about think don't think about the numbers. Think about right. the person behind the number. Right, 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 you right. Know? Like there was something that someone asked at the Game Grumps Q and A. Like I have a small YouTube channel has only like three thousand people. What can I do that's better? Like, dude, look around you. This theater holds 3,000 people. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, it's, it's it's always good. Like, don't look at the bigger streamers and bigger content creators like Small Ant, uh, Point Crow, Ludwig, uh, which is the proper pronunciation of Ludwig. Zephyrs. Not Ludi. No, it's not Ludwig. Hit Ludi and the Booty. The bootying. <laughs> You, you know, one thing I've, I have learned through streaming is I feel like, like, however, whatever your growth is or average viewers or whatever, I feel like a safe spot to aim for is like maybe 10 X of what you have. So if you're averaging like 10 viewers, you know, a stream be like, I really want to kind of get up to where that hundred is, but those people who yep. I see it a lot with, especially I want to throw any games under the bus, but like. Fortnite and and Warzone and I don't want to throw any games under the bus, but specifically these games. But specifically these games, you know, you see a lot of these streamers who who are essentially like mirror copies of you know Shroud and Ninja and not yeah. paying attention to chat and just focusing on the game. And it's like that's not going to take you from five to fifty or ten to a hundred. Well, that's why I that's why I swapped from like uploading to streaming i wanted that interaction yeah the interactions and it, it's what keeps people coming back because it's like you genuinely yeah. want to be like 
like how are you doing today what'd you do yesterday like what's new you're you're playing a fun game you are sharing your experience and that's why i started content creation i wanted to share my experience in a in a comedic but consumable manner right 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 so i like i started uploading and editing and, and streaming and the, the once i like did the streaming and there was like actual chat interaction i was like that's another person right i'm talking with another person right now Th this is actually happening and i'm doing what i would normally do without editing it it's right. less work and it's more fun right <laughs> I, I, and i feel like you know when if you're watching it back and people can at least you know like see chat on screen and like see how people are interacting it's almost like being a fly on the wall type of you know thing you're you're mm -hmm. like you're not exactly contributing to the conversation but you're seeing how it plays out and, and it's it's really interesting it's like a, a different dynamic you know than just watching a put together youtube video where you're just watching it for the content alone like having that interaction is makes it different yeah. Oh, I mean, watching a YouTube video for the just for the content sake, like it, it's it's a good way to do it. Like, obviously, people have succeeded with it. Yeah. Uh, PewDiePie, freaking Jack Septa Man, Se <laughs> Jack Septa Guy, Jack Septa Man, uh, <laughs> Jack Septa Guy, Markiplier, Crank Gameplays, freaking Game Grumps, a bunch of people. Yeah. Like a bunch of people on on YouTube. Like it's it's incredible. They've done so much with for the most part, just uploaded and edited content. They branched out into live streaming after they already had that following. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you want to do something more like that where you like edit your VOD into like really, I've seen some, some people edit like them. Like a highlight? Into, yeah. Like, like a five minute highlight, but with like really quick edits, really like memeify it, really kind of add some jokes and humor in there to kind of give it some, uh, like give it some fast pacedness. Maybe maybe i think I, I would probably if anything i would do a small ant sort of thing mm -hmm. i would i've never seen small keep ant it before. i highly recommend checking him out yeah like he's he's super cool he did a lot of challenges uh with pokemon with legend of zelda breath of the wild he beat breath of the wild without using stamina at all the green bar that comes up that didn't pop up if it did he would reset to his last save like just walking the whole time pretty much yep walking you know I mean, you've terrible. beaten the wild right <laughs> yeah yeah i've beaten that's why i think so twice. the end the end battle with mm, dark Ganon. beast ganon you have to go into bullet time right which takes up stamina right so how do you beat it how did he beat it he found well he found a way i'm not oh. gonna spoil the oh. ending oh there you go you have to watch yeah. you have to watch the content of course it, well, you don't have to, but he beat Pokemon uh, Emerald, but instead of gaining XP, you lose XP. Interesting. You go down a level, you lose your stats. Interesting. Like if, if I were to do stuff like that, I would want to cut down the VODs in a consumable enough manner that I could upload two to three episodes for a whole series. Yeah. So how, how long Unless would they probably be? Unless it were an be? ongoing continuing thing, in which case, you know, it depends. How long would they probably be? <sighs> that depends. Like, you could use multiple VODs for one episode. Yeah. Really, if you wanted to. Like, if I wanted to really go ham, I could have, like, five VODs in one 40-minute episode. Because it's all about, like, the specific parts that stand out, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's all about like building your story and making sure that it, in continuity it, it fits. It all makes sense, like a like a puzzle. Right, like a right, jigsaw. right. I feel like that's something I haven't. I, I I kind of was going for the let's play route with like my Bloodborne series on YouTube. I I noticed your thumbnails. Yeah, your yeah. thumbnails told me everything. <laughs> yeah, I I was. I was kind of looking at a couple other streamers who kind of did something similar for inspiration and kind of trying to do something similar to them. But I, I feel like I just want to go like and do original content on YouTube. Um, I feel like I really want to go the route of like, I don't know, giving like, just like advice or tutorials or like, you know, I've been streaming for a year. Here are some things I learned that I'd love to share with people and, you know, kind of jumpstart them a little bit more. I really like the idea of original content for like social media platforms, you know, specific mm -hmm. stuff for like TikTok or YouTube or Twitch or. I have stayed completely away from TikTok for various reasons. Yeah. Um, 
there was one that I saw that really rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Um, there was somebody who they had iOS 14 and they were scrolling through. I think it was Instagram and TikTok was copying to the clipboard the whole time. Uh, every like two to three keystrokes. Interesting. So I don't know the status of that video. I don't know if it's if that was debunked, but I do know that people looked into some source code and it just. It did not look safe to me and i'm already trying to wane off of like in yeah. facebook instagram that's why i'm so inactive on instagram specifically because i don't i don't post much to it when i do it's like a funny little snippet with a, a funky sort of yeah <laughs> caption or image or something uh anything i can yeah. do really that's interesting but it's it's this weird place where like social media especially if you want to be a content creator a streamer an influencer, whatever kind of amalgamation you want to throw it together. Social media is so critical to that success. Film. Yeah. It's, the whole it, film industry is it's digital. You rely on digital marketing. AKA social sure, media local. and yeah, ads. Social media, yeah. Um, sure, like local and traditional forms like billboards, uh, ads on like TV or radio. That is technically traditional, yeah. but then you have social media ads that you have to make that they can't be the same as TV because it's on a yeah. different platform. Dude, social media You're ads reaching are... reaching out to different people. Like the more I learn about social media ads, the more beyond terrifying it is, like the amount of... So here's the... Here's something like super crazy to think about. I was talking to my coworker about it um, a couple weeks ago about like everyone's had this experience where they're talking to somebody about like... I'm looking to buy a new guitar, like a guitar. I want to buy a guitar. <laughs> and then you're just having a conversation with your friend, family, whatever. Yeah. And then you get on Facebook and you start scrolling and bam, there's an ad for a guitar on there. And you're like, yep. wait a minute. So one of, here's what we're talking about. Like one of two things is going on. They're either lying to you, lying to all of us. And they are listening to our conversations and just not telling us, which is terrifying. Or I think illegal is the word illegal, you're looking for. Illegally terrifying. Yeah. But or maybe even more terrifying than that is they're truly not listening to our conversations and their algorithms are so powerful and advanced that they truly know what we're gonna buy before we know what we're gonna buy. I think it's both. You think it's both? I think it's both. Um with marketing, like say monster energy drink, with marketing God, like monster, it tastes like ass. <laughs> Monster tastes so bad. Hot That's take. why people get the flavored ones. <laughs> I, I, well, I love Monster. Yeah. Not sponsored. I, I love their their dragon tea. Their their Monster Java. I, I don't know, like the had... original one. It ta it doesn't taste good. I, I <laughs> it has drink... a distinct, unique taste. <laughs> yeah. But... I used to drink the original Monster so much in like seventh, eighth grade. I used to have one every morning before going to school for like a year. Yeah, it almost tastes like orange juice with no no <laughs> i'm trying to think of no of the flavor it's citrusy you're thinking citrus yeah the citrusy and you're relaying that to orange it has a weird citrusy tang to it it's tang, that yeah. has weird like a combination of, of ginseng taurine friggin other stuff it's sugar and chemicals that is not good for you and realistically you're better off and in more ways than one for caffeine intake and for health yeah just to go with coffee shall we even dip our toes into the the g fuels of the world that one's a gray area for me that one's still relatively new like you can yeah. you can take a look at g fuel and then also bring up those arguments at like protein shakes with the powdered yeah yeah they put a crazy ton of like caffeine and stuff in there and then just i mean all sorts of other stuff i've never been a big like energy drink of anything i mean aside from coffee um well i mean you did just say in eighth grade you would drink an an, an energy drink <laughs> true true every day it's so interesting i feel like i feel like the older i get looking back at times like that it's so long ago i just feel like it's more of a dream than anything do you kind of feel that with like older memories yeah you know, the, like sometimes the way you wake up in the morning, you're like, that was an interesting dream. That fogginess. I just feel that way about like childhood memories. 
That's how I feel that way about yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I Fair feel that enough. about. It. I, I, it's so it's such an intense feeling. I couldn't even say that sentence properly. Yeah. That's how I feel that way about yesterday. I feel that about. <laughs> I feel that about streaming. I'm just like day by day oh by my day. God, yeah. And especially since I'm like probably the worst person in the world at making any progress in video games. <laughs> like literally. No. I <laughs> not quite. No, you're not. You're not the worst. I have. It, you're. You have a different style. That's. Yeah. That's the thing. Like everyone, all of your moderators, every single one. Uh, <laughs> we all give you hell about it because it like fortune has a command saying less chatty. I added one that said more. Yes, that was the best. Like the yin and yang. We have um like every time, anyone that knows you. Anytime they're doing more chatting, they're like, oh, we're going to pull a Zeph here. Let's, <laughs> let's swap the scene over. Just five more minutes. Wink, wink. Yeah, just five, five more minutes. And then chat just starts going. And you're like, well, the people are interested. Yeah. I'm interested. Right. You know, part Controller of me. Controller aside. <laughs> part of me like really wonders, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm like enjoying Dark Souls, especially, you know, I'm really like excited to play Dark Souls more. But part of me is just like. Am I playing this because it's scheduled and because Twitch is a video game, not just a video game platform, but a lot of the video game platform is, is in Twitch. Mm. Like, am I playing this just cause I want to fit in with that? Or should I like just do just chatting? You know, there's definitely like a big, that's a thing. I know. I know. That I there's know. a large audience there. I know. You know, I, I think, I don't know when it will happen, but I definitely see myself at some point kind of going that route, maybe with like live podcasts or live mm -hmm. collabs or, and then maybe like once a week or like a nighttime thing. And I, I feel like I want to get more into playing collab games, you know, like doing just mm -hmm. chatting and then we'll have a community night and play like Mario Kart or play Among Us or play like Jackbox or something, wherever there's not a hundred bot followers that just smack you oh in the did face. you did you want to talk about that by the way did you want to fix that up that was that was so I've, i that was the first time i've ever experienced anything that intense um for anybody that doesn't know um on today on my stream on march 16th had like a hundred and it was like 120 huge bot follow craziness come in and it's the 16th it is it is i think that i think whoever was initiating it too might have been like carefully watching because i kind of made a joke to them like like oh this isn't gonna stop me like you're not doing any it, and i guess maybe antagonized them and then immediately got like 50 more bots it was not a good so on a uh, ziada <laughs> actually sent a message this morning i don't know if it was during your stream what time like how early in your stream like 30 minutes in would you yeah, say what did yeah, it happen it, it was yeah it was like 30 minutes like 7 30 okay, a.m so my time maybe maybe this message that ziada posted was because of your thing or like something else he's mm. noticed in other streamers but he actually said there's a large like follow bot kind of party going around attacking uh, people with follows what? which like you say it out loud and it doesn't sound bad yeah but like analytically speaking and i hate freaking going into that sort of mode when like someone like you and i are talking i turned off i found out how to turn off the view count on obs live and i'm so happy oh it's the best thing <laughs> don't stream I, with so viewers freeing. or it was like so with numbers freeing. yeah like even if it was there but hidden behind another window it was like ah oh, but it's i want I don't have to see it. It's perfect. Right, right. So I had that with um with Streamlabs. There's like a little icon, like an eyeball that you click and it will like mm -hmm. show or not show. Um, and I always had it hidden, but like just sometimes I was I was bad and I just moved my little mouse up over there and be like, click, up, oh, up, oh, unclick. And I, I well, because it's it's right there. But right? With like with stream stream elements like OBS Live, I have to go through like a menu to do it. And I'm like, well, I can't be bothered. Right, right. Um, you feel so, better too like when you when you don't oh, yeah. see i mean it's not even it's just seeing it when it dips you know because if you have like yeah, 20 like it's, people it's one of those like what am i doing wrong right or yeah you have like 20 people and then you're talking about a conversation and then it dips to like 14 and you're like uh oh did i say something and did i say something that offended someone did i say something like just say it's something just how fickle the internet is like it's not yeah. anything you did it's just sometimes people just pop in pop out like right. it's 
absolutely but then you get like caught in your head and then all of a sudden you're live streaming yeah. and talking to somebody but there's this little part in your head that's like yo don't you're say running something. on like half capacity exactly because you're having a whole conversation with yourself behind the scenes exactly exactly um, but like in an analytical perspective those numbers do matter yeah. in the moment they don't matter i don't like focusing on them i don't like hearing about them i have a rule in my chat it's the first rule do not mention the view count yeah i'm gonna actually start enforcing this a bit better uh because that day where you raided me and pugdemic and ice as well like everyone came in and someone mentioned hello there good pupper i live that <laughs> you raided with us right <laughs> That was a, that was a um, crazy stream. I'm that was yeah. awesome. So some someone had told me like, oh, 54 views, and I was like, well, okay, let's let's not talk about that. I, I don't really like knowing what the numbers are because I got nervous in that moment. Right. Because I average like eight viewers, just on on average throughout mm -hmm. the past whatever. Like it's usually around eight ish viewers. Yeah, yeah. So hearing 54, I'm like, right, brace for impact. <laughs> exactly. What's gonna go wrong? Right, right. Um, and today on Mario Maker, like I turned it off, and after the fact, I saw the number from the raid, and I was like, "Oh, ten people! Hell yeah, that's awesome." Sure, like I had I had a bad time with the levels, but that was that was fun. Right. It was a lot right. of fun. It was great. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's it's just all about those those interactions with people. I feel like that's just absolutely what. That's the only reason I get out of bed so early and and want to stream and and try so hard to do it. Like is as often as i possibly can is to talk to you and to talk to fortune and like like i always i mean it might seem over dramatic a little bit but like when you all pop in i do get super super excited i'm like oh man ryman's here what's going on yeah i see it sometimes you, you like you just can't like you just you just burst out like ryman and sometimes yeah. you, you you find like a clever moment like speaking of incredible people <laughs> ryman welcome in yeah exactly i mean i get really excited i, I really I'm sure I hope it's similar for you and I'm, I know it's similar for others, but you know, streaming and talking with all of you has just been such a, a catalyst of help, you know, in 2020 and beyond. Is that, is that Booker that's whining? That's Layla. She's like staring at the door, wait, wanting to go out. She's yeah. Do you want to let her out? Wife. Do you want to let oh, her out of the office? Oh, wifey just opened the door to let her out. Hi wifey. You want to come say hi? Hi. Are you done banging? I made money. You made money? Yeah. In Animal Crossing? On Hell yeah. Zachary's Island. Was is Zach streaming it? Yeah. He oh was. boy. We had a party and eat cupcakes. Oh. <laughs> oh, and we did a magic show or a fashion show and I got him a magic hat. It was really cute. I love how yes. it's me get a magic hat, not her get a magic hat. I'm also destroying our living room, so. <laughs> She took like all of her fabric and business stuff out of here like 30 minutes before this was all going down and then just took it in there and is like, bye bye wifey, love you. And just started completely redesigning our that is, living room. That's hilarious. She has so much, she has so much stuff for her business. And she is, I think just so creative and so freaking ready to conquer the world she is she really it's is incredible. super creative um, um but so uh, the bots for from an analytics oh, yeah, perspective yeah. having those numbers inflated um specifically like a follow or a sub count mm -hmm. sub counts is a little bit different because it's money on twitch you have to pay for subscriptions so yeah. twitch like they don't really look too much at that they're like oh this person has this amount of subs they sub count doesn't always match view count gifted subs exist so that one they barely take into account um but if the follow count it, like if you have ten thousand followers and mm -hmm. you're averaging five views per stream something like stream sus. by stream basis then like something's different there mm -hmm. it, it is and you're less likely to have stuff or to have your channel put up on recommended because if the interaction is is high people people like that people mm -hmm. want that from from a streamer people want to see that oh this guy cares about the chat he's asking oh how are you doing how's your day going i'm doing pretty good thanks for asking here's a funny anecdote ha 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 yeah oh this thing's happening in the game let's take a moment and then back to chatting um it's same on youtube like if you have 
an inflated amount of subscribers on YouTube, but the views and like to dislike ratio don't add up properly with your sub count, mm. then you it generally it's it's clear that either you're buying followers or subscriptions or you're just not doing something right. Right, right, right. It's it's very suspicious behavior. Not even suspicious. Like yeah. it, sometimes suspicious. Sometimes it's a little sus as the kids say. Is that what they say? I'm unclear. As someone that's never played Among Us, which is also kind of sus. <laughs> Sussed? So is it is it something we can turn into past tense? I was on a, I was unaware. I was feeling sussed yesterday. What a past terminology for it. So I'll so, take it. Something um so you know you know Super Burgentroid? Yes, just, yes, I do. Just powerhouse of positivity streamers. Love them to pieces. Um, I noticed something similar with their channel recently. Um, also, big shout out to Super Mergen Trade. If y'all don't follow Super Mergen Trade, you absolutely should. They are incredible streamers. Um, but yeah, they were celebrating their 2000 follower anniversary a couple streams ago. And I was in it hanging out. It was super awesome. They were having a ton of good time. And then like a few streams days later i noticed their channel has like six thousand seven hundred followers now and i was like holy crap did they get like a huge raid or something i, I haven't asked them but i mean it looks like it might have been like bots or something similar so and that and that's mm -hmm. like on a, a huge scale that's like triple the you know triple their numbers like what do you yeah, even do about had, something like I that i had bots come into mine i think it was like seven different bots come in on one stream oh, man. uh another one like it happened to me twice now mm -hmm. But I think the biggest, most insane thing happened, uh, that happened rather, uh, during, I think it was my 24 hour live stream, maybe a different Breath of the Wild stream. Mm -hmm. Somebody had hosted the stream. It wasn't a raid. It wasn't anything. It was, it was a host for over 300 people. And that's an intimidating number. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right off the bat. That's intimidating. So... Daisy and I, because Daisy was in chat, P Pajama mm -hmm. Princess Daisy, shout yeah. out to her. She's pretty wild. She is. <laughs> Taking over your shout outs now, Zeph. <laughs> Do it. She's amazing. <laughs> While we're at it, Sleepy Bear Games. <laughs> um, and no, so Daisy and I looked into it. We looked at the channel and we were like, what the, what the hell is this? What's going on? And it was just lines of code running. Interesting. It was, it was like... Like in the chat, like a, like, a, like a macro, not in the chat, like on the screen being brought. It was like a like a whole like desktop broadcast looking into the stream with OBS opening every now and then and then popping to like a like a stats page of like a bunch of stuff. Oh, and gotcha. Oh, the I person think, who rated you hosted. Oh, hosted, hosted. Yeah, yeah. that one's a very important indicator because I also saw that they were hosting other channels while yeah. live. Interesting. And a bunch of people in chat were like, what the hell's going on? What is this? Just report the account, whatever. It's nothing. Right. Uh, later that day, Twitch had, like, Twitch, for the most part, went down. Yeah. Chat wasn't working. Um, friggin' Twitch was being Twitch. Raids weren't working. Well, not not even Twitch not being Twitch or Twitch being Twitch. Just, like, everything was broken. Yeah. Like, they'd actually, they had had an overload in their servers because oh. of this guy. Oh, this, this one Who specific was, guy? We're, we're thinking it was this guy, but he was streaming he or she they were streaming what they were doing while they were doing it which was hilarious interesting <laughs> it was it was like a massive troll to the whole thing interesting which like you you look back on it it's hilarious but from a from you know a back end perspective that's a bit of a nuisance right right it's it's almost like committing the crime and then uh like laughing in the face as you you know walk past them yeah <laughs> insult to injury exactly exactly it's, it's, it's like it, being kicked in the nuts and then running up and instead of saying oh my god are you okay you look at the guy who just kicked you and say nice shoes right or you kick him in the nuts again while they're down or or this is my favorite mean. what you don't like getting kicked in the nuts i love getting that was my childhood <laughs> you're an asshole for not liking that <sighs> Right. I don't think anybody does. That's a terrible feeling. <laughs> it's a horrible feeling. It's horrible. So, it's here, happened. Here's one question I know I definitely wanted to ask you. Um, because I know we've talked about small ant and like a couple other streamers. Um, who if you could meet any specific one content creator in the entire world, 
whether in person or like hang out with them talk to them about like you know who they are like one specific content creator who would it be and why one specific content only one only one only one hmm. whether it's dinner or hang out for the day or like really dive into their brain i know i like i speak a lot about small land and point crow and like markiplier Ooh, markiplier and and uh like game grumps a bunch mm -hmm. um i don't know i think i think it is gonna have to be one like one of the co-hosts of game grumps yeah uh dan avadon okay he um i like i can't say danny and brian it has to be like it would just be one um but like they they did ninja sex party which is my favorite band oh are they in, in the band <laughs> dan and brian yeah yeah they I, I made the band i, I don't know anything they, about they, nsp uh, that's fair <laughs> uh they made the band they they met up one day at like a like an improv class or something uh brian was a theoretical physicist with a master's degree in applied mathematics and he left his job at the university to make songs about unicorns and wizards and and, and dicks. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Just what? on the internet. And it worked out so well because they were passionate about the music. Right, right, right. They, they they were passionate about the whole thing. And that was that was a big deal for them. Like a like a thousand subscribers was a was a huge thing. And like ten thousand, hundred thousand, million like everything beyond like it's, it's a huge, huge deal for them. And Dan he's almost I think he's just like in, in his early forties at this point. Yeah. But I think meeting him and hearing, you know, more cause I got, I got a cameo from him. I was like, Hey, like I said, I said to him like, Hey, uh, really, really appreciate what you and Brian do with Ninja sex party and what you and Aaron do on game grumps. It really has changed my life for the better. Really appreciate you stay safe during these tough times. Love you, buddy. And I, you know, sent that like 20 second clip off to him over cameo and he responded with like this whole three minute speech. It was like, Hey, wow. Will, good to, it was really nice hearing that from you. It was, it was a really, thank you for those really kind words. And like, shit, man, that's what it's all about. You know, just yeah. having fun with what you're doing. And he just went in this whole thing and he did compliment my audio, which was very nice because it was going through with, in his words, excellent sound clarity. Hey, <laughs> he's not um, wrong. I do my best, <laughs> but like, just like that small, and then I got another cameo from him for my buddies, Ross and Mel, because they were having a tough time. But like from those small pieces that I, like of, of his life that he shared with those cameos, like he, there's a lot to him. He, he cares about the music. He is passionate about what he does on the internet with with his band with his show with aaron with just all of the side projects he does with you know his, his dog his girlfriend is everything he's he's passionate he's happy he cares about what he's doing and like it shows in the quality of his music even from the very beginning from his album from 2011 i think it was or 2009 yeah uh nsfw he like you can hear despite it being like 2011 2009 kind of era you can hear that it is good it is well produced that's why it, it, it is it's just good every what he does is good objectively it is good i yeah lolly has been telling me for a while i gotta listen to ninja sex party um are they on spotify i think they, they are on spotify okay. yeah they are on spoofy man i'll uh, um that kind of reminds me there's um you know the band queen like bohemian yes. raps yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i'm familiar <laughs> so brian may their guitar player he was also he also was getting his like degree in i think it was like astronomical physics or something and getting his no he's getting his doctorate in it when the band and everything formed and wifey and i just watched bohemian rhapsody a few nights ago so that's why that popped in my head but it, that's it's it's really cool seeing like super intelligent getting their degree in physics or calculus or whatever and they're like you know what we're gonna have 
We're gonna do something totally opposite. We're gonna talk about unicorns and all sorts of crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, in in like Ninja Sex Party's case with Brian, it was instead of continuing with my job as a university professor, I am going to wild. write a song called the No Reason Boner. No Reason Boner. <laughs> oh my God. If we were gay, the decision, objects of desire. One of my personal favorites, um, and this, this really shows the passion behind it. Yeah. It is an eight and a half minute song that had a nine and a half minute music video for a song called 6969. By nice. Ninja Sex Party. Double the nice. Thumbnail. The thumbnail. Do you know Rush, Zef? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 2112. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same it kind of style. It was extremely 2112. The whole song, you get like, do, do you have the the um, uh, 2112 deluxe album? Uh, I've listened to pretty much every single Rush album. I'm, I love Rush. So the first one on 2012 Deluxe, you get yeah, yeah. like overtuned and like 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 the three, four different things in one. Yep, yep. It is that. But the transition is so smooth and it's so Ooh. progressive and it makes sense. I'm immediately intrigued. I'm immediately intrigued. I, the I'm... video is a little bit strange and I highly, highly recommend you watch the video with it. Just be it's strictly because of the production value. Yeah. Like with with productions you have to keep in mind like there there's the actual production itself mm -hmm. which has like 80 different people in like seven different departments you have the writing you have the post production you have the choreography you have the outfits the makeup the the set design the set building after the designing like there's so many elements to this it for eight and a half minutes <laughs> that's why I, I i love so is that particular song like a progressive song uh, i say I, progressive like I, when i more like you can hear the progress between the different styles that they have in the music gotcha 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 um, for progressive in like a like a social justice mm. quote unquote sure sure sort of sort of manner um from their album cool patrol there's a song called Danny Don't You Know, which is a song about current Danny going back in time to like younger Danny and saying, hey, man, it's it's going to be good. Just be you. Be yourself. Go with yeah. it. I know you walk like a newborn deer. But, you know, just go with it. Just go with uh, it. Look at me. Just like go with it, dude. Be yourself. Have fun. I Don't think, worry about what other people think. I think a lot of people could maybe learn from that a little bit people people are so concerned with what other people think about them and lolly it's a society thing it's society yeah. and capitalism at the same time lolly said something a few weeks ago that just like i would get tattooed on me it was it stuck with me so hard it was the people who care don't mind oh no the people who mind don't care and the people who don't care shit now i wait what was it people who the people care. who don't mind care the people who don't care mind yes 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 my 12 kilobytes kinda, of memory i figured that me. one out pretty quick because I, I had a feeling <laughs> it would be an opposite i was like saying it i'm like wait 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 nope i think the other way i think the other way see well, i like obviously i care about what people think mm -hmm. like it's it's built into me yeah. as somebody in this current modern day society it is built into me to care to to give a damn about that um on the other end of it though like i i've i have said worse things about myself to myself than all of these people have on the internet and i have been told horrible horrible things but like it 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 doesn't it doesn't matter as much they're saying it behind a screen they they wouldn't tell you that in person i almost guarantee it yeah it's hard not to get caught up in it and like even for anyone for any like big streamer if they see like a harassment message that slips through the cracks you can always see that it does affect them but you have to know where like where to look and how to see it it's impossible to get that sort of thing out of your head like you're gonna be thinking about that for a few days and maybe that's the person's intention sure but like god damn dude 
in the end, it doesn't matter. What people say about you shouldn't affect who you are and who you try to be. Who you try to be and who you are is a product of your experiences from the past and what you took from those experiences, from the memories and the, the, the friendships you have with people around you. You are a culmination of absolutely everything that has happened to you and every lesson you have learned. I agree. I think that was really well said, honestly. I 100% uh, agree with all of that. Totally agree. I think that was the first time I didn't horribly stutter in all, all of my answers. Even just now, I, I stuttered again. It, it was that was 10 out of 10, honestly. That, that was I, I I can't disagree with any of that. That was really, really giving, good. I'm giving speeches now, apparently. <laughs> we need more Ryman speeches in our life. Absolutely. Um, Ryman just chatting when? Always just chatting. Always just chatting. <laughs> if I if I do hit that sub goal, then there's going to be a, a 24 hour marathon stream. There's likely going to be some just chatting. Just a just a little bit sprinkled in there. <laughs> I, so about 20 hours of it. 20 hours. That that would be 20, 20 hours. hours. My um, so you know Happy Pigs Gaming, Mike? Yes. Yeah. yeah. When he does his 24 hour streams, he usually starts with like three to four hours of just just chatting, and. I mean, that's a skill in and of itself. I mean, I guess like just the more you talk to people, the more you, you know, get comfortable talking to people, the better you get. But like, I mean, I've even noticed it too, you know, over my year of streaming, like my communication skills, talking with people one-on-one -on -one has gotten so much better than it was a year ago. And I feel like, especially with doing discord and podcasts and stuff, hopefully we'll get even better. But have you noticed something similar to that? Just communication overall getting better as you've been streaming more? in text in general because i've been doing a lot of like emailing and, and messaging mm -hmm. i've gotten better um if i were to see another human being i would recoil in fear <laughs> at this point um like in, like one in on discord one, or, or like in irl discord is fine yeah. like ir it's it's a like a, like a pandemic joke yeah oh gotcha gotcha like, wear, wear your masks <laughs> folks. there you go there you go we should do a wear whole, your masks. We should do a whole stream where we just wear a mask. I'll do it. I'll do the rest is, of this with a mask. Is that science doesn't care about your feelings? Science doesn't care what you believe. Happy what face. You believe. Happy it's true. Face. I mean, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's true. passive aggressive, but true. I, um, my favorite one I've seen in, is in, in real life. I couldn't do. I couldn't do it though. I mean, do you think you'd ever want to do like a podcast IRL with like a second person or? maybe I, cut, I probably cut. i kind of cut you off there sorry what you saw you saw a cool thing oh um what was it i th oh i saw someone a few days ago that had a mask that said like it goes over your nose and i i just wanted to stop them and be like where did you get that i need that i would shake your hand but there's a pandemic <laughs> elbows elbows Elbow bump. um so i did have a few more questions before we wrap up the podcast right man um one I kind of was asking, it's a little bit similar to the last one about like, who's the content creator you'd want to meet. Um, kind of shooting off that, who would you say are three core people that have influenced who you are, whether that's in personal life or, or content or just three individuals you think that have like really shaped who you are, you know? Three individuals that have influenced and shaped me to Had who I am. Greatest impact on you. Um oh Man, that's a big one. That's a big question. It could be um, streamer, <clears throat> YouTube, or I mean it could even be personal, like in your personal life. Whatever you feel comfortable sharing, of so, course. So obviously Danny, Dan Avedon. Yeah. Danny Saxbang. Uh he's he's had a huge um influence on my life for for the better. Um, through his music and his commentary with Game Grumps, like it's, it just, it, he he really taught me what it what passion looks like, and how to express and get passionate about things. That is like it, that alone, I think, has 
really taken off my my ability to enjoy all of this like i'm i i can i w i will do all of this for life if if i could safely do that but financially i don't think i could do that um you actually are a pretty big influence for me zef believe it yeah. or not um yeah well you keep with all of everything that you are dealing with all of the things i know I just know you're dealing with way more than you talk about on stream. There's like, there's no way it's as minimal as you say, because you, you do leave it pretty minimal and pretty, you know, out there for interpretation. And a lot of that is because you want to keep the positive vibe going and you don't want to, you don't want to bring that down. But a lot of it is because it's your personal life and that's, that's where you are. That's where you aren't Zephyr's XP. That's where you are, you know, your name that is left unknown familiar name missing <laughs> um but yeah like you you have like you've kind of inspired me to really push through a lot of what's going on just to try and do something i enjoy which is streaming interacting with people and having fun with it at the same time like turning off the view count i honestly if it wasn't for how much you talk about it and how awesome it made you feel i don't think i would have done it it's it's not the vegan effect that's different that's when someone talks about being vegan so much that you hate them <laughs> uh, <laughs> um like i would not have turned off the view count at all and turning it off like immediately i felt better there was like a weight lifted and i was like oh well i don't know how many people are here i don't know if there's if there is anyone here i'll talk as if there's someone here why not why not let's just go for it. And the last person that has really been just here for me thick and thin was my mother. She has been um more more than kind, more than generous. Um just incredible all around. Um dealing with 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 whatever I am. <laughs> Um, supporting me through um, this crazy, crazy time in in the world. Um, really just, you know, helping me with whatever she can with, with college and with pursuing digital media as something I can actually, you know, pursue and get a career in, whether that be uh, like a, like a production house, whether that is like a, like a movie thing or whether it's it's twitch if it is if it works it works and uh, like i just want to stop and say really quick that if twitch doesn't work out as a career fine that's whatever it's not what it's meant to be for me it is fun it is about sharing my experiences and i want to do it for me what i am the content i'm creating is for people to watch but it's not for them it's for me because i enjoy it and the moment it stops becoming something for myself to enjoy is the moment it doesn't really matter anymore. It's the moment I need to take a step back and reevaluate what's going on. And that's that's a lesson she taught me. That's awesome. That That's awesome. Uh, big hugs for you, Ryan, man. Get over here. <laughs> Come on in, buddy. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I think family can just truly be just such a difference maker. And especially if they have support there for you, like real support, like whatever you want to be, wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, having someone genuinely there that is looking out for your best interests and like really loving you and, and wanting to care for you is not a lot of people have that. And if you do have someone like that in your life, hold on to them as tight as possible and, and definitely don't let them go. Well, that's how I'm able to explore like this whole realm of, of audio and, and mixing and, and video editing and content creation, like through their support, whether it be through like birthday gifts or Christmas, like I'm able to, like I have a mixer board interface. I have this wonderful microphone. I have this webcam. I have like a like a small stream deck that I can't really lift up because of <laughs> wires. Yeah. Like I have 
all this going like this friggin' PVC green screen holder. Yeah. Got a peek of what's behind the curtain there. It was it was it was bookbinding glue. <laughs> Ooh, bookbinding glue. Yeah, it's bookbinding glue. My high school had a whole print shop and I did a lot of that stuff. That's pretty cool. I know I know, I know too much about printers. <laughs> um like the this this was my green screen used to be held up with two pieces of string attached to a bunk bed and a curtain rod and it was yeah. lopsided and it like you couldn't tell on screen on, on stream rather because this of the brief. framing yeah but like now like i can zoom out with this camera a little bit more and you can see like there's a pvc thing here holding it up now and that was like that was built that was home built it was because they know i love doing this so much so well here you go we can do it man go all out right have a better setup that's awesome definitely yeah having that support is just so incredible and the cool thing with green screens is like you can get a great green screen green screen setup and it does not have to be expensive so you can totally make it you yourself you can get you can get um a shower curtain from the dollar store for two dollars and that is your green screen small that ant like again more call outs <laughs> um small ant is like he is a massive twitch streamer he that is his green screen really? a dollar store shower curtain wow wow he's also the number one pencil sharpener in the world i think i, I think so, that's his twitter bio right i'm pretty sure it is actually I it is um i think i think it is that's awesome I, that I've would seen, make sense i've seen some people where they actually get the green paint and like actually paint the wall behind them that's That'd be such an ugly wall color now that I'm thinking about it. As someone who has green walls, I can say it depends on the shade. Maybe. Maybe. It really I feel depends like on the shade. Maybe darker. Maybe dark could be better, but like bright green. Sometimes like um, kind of like a, a light dull. Mm -hmm. Sort of a, a lighter green, but desaturated. Yeah. To almost look a little bit great. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know if if my stream chair were bought, like in front of if this were an actual wall, maybe I would paint that section green, mm -hmm. but I kind of like having open space so I can just right. vanish there, on cue. There you go. Can can you um, is that pretty this easy as far as it goes? <laughs> that should be a channel point. Play, <sighs> play like one minute all the way back. Maybe. Maybe that'd be uncomfortable, though. That might be. Not it was a little bit uncomfortable. It's not a great angle on me either. You can see my double chins. I, we all got double chins. Tis. I have like 70, 70 chins. Have, um, are you growing? <laughs> are you like growing a beard or anything? Um, I am not. I'm not shaving. <laughs> yeah, I have no reason to like to try and like clear up the peach fuzz. But there, I do have kind of a little bit of a mustache. A mustache going. going. I, it's hard I, to see because I'm naturally very blonde. Oh yeah, yeah. I love like this. This this is the natural hair color, but in in this is very thick and fine hair. So it's the silver it used to hair. Be lighter. The silver hair looks yes. badass. Silver yes, hair. Yes, it's faded quite a bit. I need to get it redone. Yeah. It's like maybe like this much of it is um yeah about that much is just uncolored. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I just don't cut my hair apparently. I mean, it costs a lot of money, right? It's some upkeep. It's true. That's, it's that, true. That's always, I, I cannot remember. It must have been when I was like 13 or 14. Last time I like got an actual paid for haircut. Just ever since then, I just buzz my hair or grow it out super long and then buzz it again. I'm, I'm extremely simple. <laughs> I mean, if it works, you know, like. I'm a man a while, of simple I taste. Had, like. <laughs> short hair it was like a little spike up at the at the front it looked pretty good yeah yeah the worst thing though is like looking back at old photos where you were oh. super insecure and yeah. like you look back and you're like oh why was i insecure i looked fantastic i date me <laughs> there you go there you what go the hell there you go yeah I have, i've and seen you look and you look like now and you're like well i wouldn't date this me <laughs> <laughs> maybe a few years few years passed yeah i so i do have two more questions if that's okay with you before we wrap up totally fine um this one i think is a great one what is a question 
I did not ask you today during the podcast that you would have asked yourself. Oh. Okay, so kind of like the, the feedback portion of the of the podcast. Maybe, yeah, yeah. If Ryman was um, interviewing Ryman, what is a question Ryman would want to ask Ryman? If if I were interviewing, um, if I were if I were the one doing the interviewing, hmm. I think my my first question would be what inspired you to start making content? Because like that's one you like you hear it a lot, but like it's a pretty good one and you have like a pretty solid foundation there that you could probably build other stuff on. Yeah. So that would be one of my openings. Like so what what inspired you? What why are you making content? I think I think I did have that one. Am I, did I not ask that one? I think I have that I as the second one. I don't think you asked that one. What got I don't you? think you asked that specifically. I think like yeah. what got you into Twitch or what? Into streaming. That's a good one. Yeah. So knowing that, what got you interested in making content? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the second question? Is that, that how this works? That is that is actually not the second question, but I think <laughs> I think it would be a shame to not ask that specific one. Since this is a I mean, content oh, so, creation so we're podcast. Just, we're just one more question. Just one more question. Just one more question. Right, right. Ten questions later. Just like five more minutes of just chatting. I promise. Wink. Exactly. We, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, just like an overdramatic, like. Exactly. You get it? You get it? <laughs> yeah. Um. What inspired me personally for making content was just wanting to be able to share my experiences with people. Like that's that's really it. I just wanted to have fun and I like having fun and I like sharing that fun with people. So I thought, well, I mean, it might not get many, you know, views or anyone's interests, but fuck it, do it. Right. Why not? Like, just go for it. And that's why I tell a bunch of people for a bunch of stuff. I think I told you for the for like whether or not you were considering doing the podcast. I said, just do it. If you want to do it, go for it. 100 percent. Like if if it doesn't work out, then you don't have to continue it or you can slowly, you know, end it off. Like it's just go for it. And I, I went for it. I had a whim. I acted off of said whim and it worked out pretty well. Like I, I met some amazing people. I, I am more than proud to call my friends. I'd even argue are family to me at this point. You know, as the as the saying goes, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Ooh, that's a good quote. That's a good quote. It's, it is a quote that everyone miss says, because they always say blood is thicker than water, but it's that gives it a completely di- that, that is the opposite meaning of what the quote is. <laughs> kind of counterintuitive. A little bit. Just a little bit. So, one final one for your Rye man. Where can our listeners, our viewers connect with you online? So to connect with me online, uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Ryman3. That's R-I-M-A-N-3. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Ryman3 underscore. That's a little, it's like a dash, but longer and at the bottom. <laughs> Apparently people don't know what an underscore is. I, I learned that one actually the other day. Um, same spelling, Ryman3 underscore. And Instagram, you can find me at uh, at billiard.yo. That's B-I-L-L-A-R-D, full stop, period, dot, whatever you want to call it, Y-O. All right. Ryman, it has been an absolute honor. Thank you so incredibly much for not only being on the podcast, but for being the very first guest. I really, really appreciate it. For everybody listening I will be um, putting this podcast on my Patreon account for the very first two weeks. Um, And then after that, it will be uploaded on YouTube. So you absolutely can check it out there. All of the links for Ryman and myself are going to be down in the description below. So absolutely can connect to our Twitch accounts, Twitter, all of that good stuff down there. And we will be having another episode next week. Don't exactly know who yet, or maybe it'll be a surprise, but... I really, really, really want to thank you so much for the opportunity to chat with you and hang out. 
for the past three hours. Holy crap. It it has been a hot minute. <laughs> Just time flies. I, I really appreciate this opportunity, Zeph. I really enjoyed this time that we we spent in the call chatting about just whatever, you know? It's it's been a really great time and the pleasure really is all mine. Thank you so much, Ryan man. You have an amazing night. And again, to everyone out there, nothing but love and good vibes always, my friends. And I'll catch you all in the next